Welcome to Poland and the third leg of the IAAF World Indoor Tour. We're in Torun, the European city of sport for 2019. The best part of almost three hours live action coming your way in front of a sold-out crowd of more than 5,000. It's the Orlen Copernicus Cup. The chase for those indoor tour points intensifies as we reach the halfway point of the six-meeting tour. Just four days ago, we kicked off the European leg in southwest Germany, where some fantastic performances lit up Karlsruhe. Leg two of the IAAF World Indoor Tour in Karlsruhe saw world champion Katarina Stefanidi have a share of the spoils in the pole vault with Alicia Newman of Canada and Angelica Sidorovert at 4 meters 71. Not the day of world champion Yulimar Rojas in the triple jump. Run-up problems meant that the victory instead went to Spain's Ana Pelotero with her winning leap of 14 meters and 51 centimeters. Naoto Tobe of Japan, a meeting record and a world lead of 2 meters 35, stole the headlines in the men's high jump, while Eva Svoboda posted a world lead of 7.08 seconds to take the women's 60 meters. Juan Miguel Echeverria, the world indoor long jump champion, also not his day. He was beaten on countback by Tobias Nilsson Montler of Sweden after both registered 8.08 as their longest leaps. On the track, Andreas Kramer, another Swede, took victory in the 800 metres as he saw off the fast-finishing American Sawinski, while it was a Kenyan 1-2 in the men's 1500 metres as Vincent Kibet overhauled Bethwell Bergen in the closing stages. Pafel Maslat, the dominant force of the men's 400 metres, took victory in that event, while Great Britain's Melissa Courtney, a world-leading time to close the event with the women's 3000 metres. So a great night in Karlsruhe a few days ago. I'm Chris Temple, and once again I'm joined in commentary by Jenny Meadows. Jenny, good evening. Who are you looking forward to seeing? Well, obviously the middle distance always captures my interest. I'm looking forward to seeing Martin Lomondowski in the men's 1500 metres, and British middle distance star Laura Muir also goes over the 800 metres. Echeverria there as well in the long jump. There's a huge list of stars. We mentioned Laura Muir and Mary Jose Talou, amongst others. That is what we've got to come up. That's the first page of the timetable. We kick off very shortly with the women's shot put, including the world indoor champion Anita Martin. Then we'll see Juan Miguel Echeverria from just before 1830 in the men's long jump. He was in action, of course, just a few days ago in Karlsruhe as well. The men's 60 meters hurdles picks unbeaten pair Orlando Ortega and Jarrett Eaton together. Both have started 2019 in fine form. The men's pole vault, a non scoring event, but should still be a cracker. Sam Kendricks, the world champion, taking on the Polish pair of Piotr Lisek and Pavel Wojciechowski as well, which is sure to get the home crowd going as well. And Laura Muir, as Jenny mentions there, goes at 19.10 in the women's 800 metres. We move to the second page. The men's high jump features former world champion Donald Thomas, amongst others. Strong Polish interest in the women's 400 metres as well, including double European champion Justyna Svieti. Esetic as well as we move towards the close of the program the men's 1500 meters Martin Lewandowski potentially going for a Polish record and the women's 60 meters final to close the evening which should if all goes to form hit Iwa Swoboda the informed Polish athlete against the world silver medalist Marie Jose Talu 5200 sold out this meeting for quite a while packed inside here at the Arena Torren, a uh, partisan home support as well, and lots of Polish athletes going very well at the start of 2019 as we move in towards World Championship year, and it's Ernest, of course. So, ready to enter the arena are the athletes for our first event of the evening. They are our shot putters, the women's shot puts, coming out in throwing order through the gates in the arena here. <laughs> Eventually, Poland's Claudia Kardash, who beat Paulina Guba, the European champion, just a couple of days ago in a personal best. Brittany Crew of Canada, the national record holder, indoors and out at position two. 
Jessica Ramsey, who finished third in the Boston meeting, the first leg of the IWF World Indoor Tour. National silver medalist outdoors. She'll throw in position three. Perlina Guba, European champion. A funny roost, in fact, uh, there. The European under-23 champion, I should say, the national record holder indoors and out. Dubitskaya of Belarus, 18 metres 94. And we see Anita Martin, world indoor champion, world silver medalist. And there's Christina Schwanitz. The world champion from 2015, coming out to complete the field. I think the announcer in the... Uh, Arena. <laughs> I think one of them's a bit late there. I'm not sure the announcer, I think, got one ahead of himself in the arena here. Anyway, they're all out there, that's the main thing. Uh, a couple of them looked a bit confused as they came out to other people's names, I think. Anyway, uh, we've got them all there, and they will get underway very shortly indeed down in front of us. And we're looking forward to a fascinating contest for sure in that, because three really of the big hitters of the, the pole vault. There'll be lots of home support behind Paulina Guba, the European champion who very recently has come into this in good form, 18 metres and 10 in Lutz. Lots of these competitors just uh, a few days ago competing across Poland. That is the full lineup, by the way, in throwing order. And the big hit is really Jenny down the bottom of that list there. Christina Schwanitz, who, 33 years old, has got most major championship medals on her CV. And Anita Martin, the world indoor champion, actually missed the back end of last season through injury. So a great marker for some of these ladies in terms of where their year is going to be at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially the European athletes. We've got, obviously, Glasgow, the European Indoor Championships, just three, three and a half weeks away now. And the European Athletics Federation standard is 17 metres 10. And, you know, you can see from the stats there that a lot of these ladies are far in excess of that. So they'll definitely be fighting out for the medals in Glasgow. So the first of our field events to get underway very shortly indeed. Don't forget in the World Indoor Tour scoring events, 10 points up for grabs for the winner, 7 for second place, 5 for third and 3 for fourth as we prepare to see our first put of the evening heading out towards the 18-metre mark. As you can see here, they uh, don't have the markers on the ground, they have them on the side of the cage. So those sets of lines as a guide throughout the evening are going to be at 17 metres and at 19 metres. Claudia Cardas, her best record, best uh, mark this season so far, 18 metres and 14. That's come in at 18.05, so a solid enough start for Claudia Cardas in the pole vault, in the yeah, pole vault. She is Polish in the shop, but I should say. Brittany Crew, the Canadian, will go next. 17.70, her best in the uh, performance so far this season. Coming in well short of the 17-metre line. 17.70 in Boston to uh, kick off the indoor tour season. And for a lot of these athletes who competed in the, the US, they've had a bit of time since Boston as well. It's just to, to, I guess, build on what they performed in Boston and iron a couple of things out in training and come and give it another go here. Yeah, absolutely. It's about 10 days ago now since that meet in Boston. Um, see Brittany Crew not very happy, you know, she was shaking her head. Sometimes it does just take, you know, a throw to kind of, you know, get your eye in there. So next to throw will be Jessica Ramsey of the US, who finished third in Boston with 18 metres and 22, the US silver medalist outdoors. She's coming up well towards uh, the 19 metre line again. That looks a solid enough start for Jessica Ramsey of the USA. Yeah, 19 metres 23 is her best uh, mark outdoors. Recorded 18.22 so far this indoor season. And that's gone past that. She just scribbles a note down herself. 18 metres 43. You often see athletes there with a notebook out there. You don't. Nice pen as well. <laughs> So athletes lined up then for the first of our track events. It's heat one of two in the women's 60 metres hurdles. They'll contest a final later on, and that is the start list. Seven athletes in total, which we'll introduce you to one by one. Again, strong Polish interest. Three of the seven starters. We introduce on the outside one of those, first of all. The national bronze medalist, 
Wojciech Weber, 2014 national champion of Poland in lane eight. Lane two, Susanna Hulish, just 19 years of age, who hails from Torun, so a hometown favourite here in Poland. As we introduce the sprints, by the way, if you weren't with us the other day, we introduced them from the outside, crescendoing towards the athletes in the centre. Luka Koszak, who set a personal best of 8.07 just on Friday, the athlete from Hungary. Lane three, fourth in the world indoors in 2016, the vastly experienced Andrea Ivancevic of Croatia. Yvonne Britton's had a mixed tour of Europe so far. She's had a PB, 7.98 in France on Friday, followed by a disqualification in Karlsruhe on Saturday. She's here to make it third time lucky. And the world bronze medalist over the 100 metres hurdles, the world leader, Pamela Dutkiewicz, representing Germany. Fastest time in the world this year, 7.89, the meeting record holder. And finally, there'll be some noise too for the couple of times European youth silver medalist from Poland, Karolina Koleszek. Those are seven athletes then lining up for the first of two heats in the women's 60 metres hurdles. A loaded second heat to come as well. The first two, plus the four fastest losers across the two heats, will make the final later on. Our first track action then here in Torin, leg three of the IAAF World Indoor Tour. 60 metres hurdles heats for women. So away they go first time, Dukovic and Kolacek, as you'd expect, going out well, and Britain as well, going strongly as well. It's even Britain just at this stage, but now Dukovic's got to come through, and Dukovic and Britain in the end, just edging out Kolacek into third position. Pamela Dukovic, 8.04, the official winning time. Just uh, a tenth of a second or so outside her world leading time so far, but for the heats, Jim, that's, a, again, a very solid performance from the German. Yeah, she powered through, didn't she? Didn't have the best start. The best start was the Polish athlete in lane four, but she really strode her strength towards the end of that race, you know, taking the victory and uh, job done. As you see the start here, Yvonne Britton was uh, potentially the first to rise just outside her. Kolacek suddenly found pressure coming on both sides. Also going well was Koszak on this near side as well, who will uh, go through, I would expect, as one of the four fastest as we see the head on. The two coming pretty close there, Dukovic and uh, Kolacek. Yeah, they absolutely did. Um, it was fascinating, actually, just to see whether she actually stepped over the white line or not at Ooh. any point. Um, it's close. I tell you what, that looked very, very close for Pamela Dukovic. I think the officials might be having a little look at that. She was on the line for a couple of steps, but was there one that just snuck over? We will keep our eyes on that. So we'll have a, another little look at that for Pamela Dukovic. We saw them very close. Now watch her right foot here. There's a couple of times it lands on the line. That's probably just about OK. Now, is there a step coming in a second after this next hurdle that is potentially going to interest the officials there? Mm. Jen? Yeah, you're allowed a foot on the line. It was half a foot outside for me, but, you know, we'd love to see her go again here this evening. So from a spectator's point of view, let's hope so. Well, that'd be a huge shame if one of the top talents is uh, for the sake of a few couple of centimetres, but the rules are the rules. That is how it stands at the moment. Anyway, the capital Qs indicate the automatic qualifiers. The likes of Kolacek and Koshak. We'll have to wait and see if they're through as the, uh, the four next fastest. That's the time for those uh, 808 who are keeping an eye on the, uh, or rather, 844 really, it's just four go through, don't they? So Bebe in sixth place with 844. The time for the others who get outside the top two to try and get themselves a place in the final later. So let's pick up the women's shot, but then Kardash is on her third attempt currently. As we wait to see where that one is there, sorry, she's in her second attempt. 17 metres and uh, 90. So again, coming in short of that uh, 18 metres line for Claudia Kardash. Just slight, uh, slightly down on her opening round throw. As I say, a good scout for her, Paulina Guba, her countrywoman, toppling her in uh, Lourdes with that PB a couple of days ago, 18 metres and 14. Brittany Crew, the World University's champion in 2017, the last staging of that game. So the Canadian record holder indoors and out. And a 
again, she's uh, around about that 17 metre line, which she'll be looking a, a lot better, a lot more from Jen. 17.70 already this year, so she's coming in well short of what she's capable of. Yeah, we could actually see an improvement in the speed of her arm there. Um, as you see, when she rotated through the circle, her arm came what through faster at the end, and yeah, you know, a whole metre further than her first round throw. Still just under that 17 metre mark, of course. She'll be looking for a lot further than that this evening. So the current leader, as things stand, is Kardash with her... Uh, sorry, Jessica Ramsey with 18 metres, 43. This is our event leader, then. Building up the atmosphere here in the stadium. That one slipped out. She walks out the front, so that's a red flag. That one won't be measured. Yeah, that one went out to the side, didn't it? And she just stepped out on purpose. She didn't want a measurement. So uh, saves the official a little bit of a job, doesn't it? Saves a bit of ink in that pen. She was writing the, uh, the distances down as well. I don't think she writes X's down by the look of it. As we see, Fanny Rose. Next, the European under-23 champion, national record holder indoors and out from Sweden. Ten times national champion as well. Foul in the first round for her. And she uh, does get a white flag on this occasion. Good to get one on the board. Don't forget for the field events again, the uh, athletes are reordered not only after three rounds, but also after five rounds as part of a new IAAF initiative this year. It's Fanny Rose, 16 metres and 71. Again, she's posted 18.33 this year as the European champion, Paulina Guba of Poland, the home favourite, steps into the circle. 18 metres and 10, her best so far, and she also had a foul in round one. Certainly building the atmosphere here inside the arena. Guba looking to give the home fans what they've come for. She looks a bit resigned, but it's going to be in the 18-metre region again there. Not overly thrilled with that, but again, after a foul in round one, just good to, for a bit of confidence, get something on the board, 18-09, which puts her into third position currently, overall. Yeah, just one centimetre down on the season's best, so, you know, about equal Stevens at the moment. Just looked up into the board, um, looked into the crowd as well, just to get a little bit of information to a coach. Let's go back to the track then and heat two of the women's 60 metres hurdles. All lanes occupied here, one to eight. And again, a couple of Polish favourites and the experienced Cindy Rowling right in the centre. So starting on the inside, Again, they ramp the noise up for the home favourite, the world under-20 bronze medalist in the heptathlon, in fact, from last summer in Tampere, when she finished behind Great Britain's Neve Emerson, Adriana Schulek. Set a national junior record in that uh, world under-20s in Tampere as well. The national champion of Austria, Stefanie Bendrat, world indoor semi-finalist, will go in lane eight, right on the outside. We flip-flop back to lane two. Twice the national champion of the Czech Republic, Lucy Kudelova. 8.19, her best. A couple of tenths below that this season so far. The national champion indoors and out from Finland, Nurulota Naziri. Another Finn in lane three, ran very well the other night in Karlsruhe, just stumbled in the final actually, which possibly cost her victory. She's broken eight seconds for the first time this season. Rita Huska. Lane six, the European under-20 bronze medalist from Poland, just 20 years of age. Claudia Sisiets. Then the extremely experienced European champion from 2014, European bronze medalist on home soil in Germany last year, Cindy Rolada, who finished second in that race in Karlsruhe in her home country on Saturday. And we finish alongside her with the lady who finished ahead of her in the European Championships, the European champion from Belarus, Elvira Herman. Once again, the first two automatically reach the final later, plus the four fastest losers across the two heats. Women's 60 metres hurdles.
Once again away cleanly and Herska got a flyer in lane three and it's her leading at the moment from Roller. Also coming through Sissiertz on this near side but Herska holds on tight for second. Sissiertz and Herman was coming late as well but Ruta Herska is really having a fine couple of weeks. She looks in tremendous fettle and she takes the victory. 7.99 again which it matches her personal best. Breaks eight, eight seconds for the second time in her life. Yeah, she's really on a career form shape, isn't she? Um, you know, she got out from the blocks, the drive babe was fantastic, accelerated all the way to the finish. Well, as you look here, as we get to the first hurdle, she's half a metre up already. Yeah, that seems to be her strongest part of the race. So they do come back to her a little bit towards the end, but, uh, you know, her first four hurdles specifically, she's just half a stride against everybody else from the very beginning. Really clean hurdling. It's a really good run from Claudia Sissiotis in lane six on the left of the shot there in the blue, the European under-20 bronze medalist who was had a couple of very experienced characters outside her in the shape of well, Herman, the European champion, but also Rolida as well. I'll confirm the, uh, the full result for you of heat two. 7.99 for Herska, Sissiets in the end, Dave come through from lane six for the second of those automatic qualification spots. And Herman and Naziri and Potentially roll it as well. We'll go through as fastest losers into the final a little bit later on. So we go back to the shot put and a second round throw for Aliona Dubitskaya. And that is heading out towards that 19 metre line for Dubitskaya, who threw 18.39 in round one. 18.84, Aliona Dubitskaya, so that takes the lead. That's got her best part of 40 centimetres ahead of the rest of the field, the Belarusian. So, Brittany Crew, live pictures, round three. 16.93, her best so far. And that's the right side of that 17-metre line, so that will be an improvement for Brittany Crew, who's currently down in sixth position. Yeah, she has got a season's best out to 17.70, so still a little bit short of that here this evening. 17 metres exactly. So she is improving every round. She just needs a few more rounds. <laughs> Absolutely. Jessica Ramsey will go next after that foul in round two. Which, uh, if you were with us at the start, she had a little notebook writing down how things went. Currently, she's in third position with her best throw of 18.43. Again, that's going to be short, I think, of the 18-metre line. She's happy for that one to be measured. Gets a white flag on this occasion. Anita Martin's best so far, Jen, just eye-catchingly uh, disappointing, 16.64. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a bit similar to what we saw in Carl Drew the other day in some of the events, especially the field events. I think sometimes, you know, you've had a, a tough winter, you've put a lot of work in, and sometimes it's just, you know, brushing off the cobwebs, as it were. So Fanny Roos, the Swedish athlete, 10 times the national champion. She's thrown 18, six, uh, 1833, rather, already this year. That one, again, has slipped out, so she uh, doesn't quite step over the line, but uh, walks along the, uh, the board at the front of the circle as if it's a tightrope which signals the red flag. The official just catching the attention of his uh, colleague who's doing the measuring, saying there's no need to measure that one. So Fanny Roos not so happy. So introducing the athletes then for the men's long jump. First to come out, 22-year-old from Poland, Mateusz Jopek, their national junior bronze medalist. Has already set a PB this year of 7 metres and 50. Strong Polish contingent in this men's long jump field, by the way. Next, Andreas Kuk, the national bronze medalist from 2017. Capable of 7.58 with his best form. A man in very good form, set a personal best just on Sunday, the Polish indoor champion, Mateusz Roszanski. European junior silver medalist, the fourth successive pole, Thomas Jaszuk.
Mix, the man who took the World Indoor Champion by a bit of surprise the other day. Fourth in the European Championships, but the winner in Karlsruhe, Tobias Nielsen Mottler of Sweden. Radek Juska, the European Indoor Silver Medalist from 2015, the World University Games Champion from the Czech Republic. Then comes Jarvis Gotch, who also competed in Karlsruhe the other day, 7.29, well below his best. Fourth in the US Championships. And the last to come out will be the World Indoor Champion, Juan Miguel Echeverria. 8.08 the other day, which was uh, an ominous first round jump, but he didn't improve on that, and he lost in the end to Nielsen Montler on countback on the basis of their second best jump, but he did have one or two issues with the uh, the runway, I think, the other day, Jen, so with a, a slightly firmer underfoot uh, conditions, if you like, here in Arena Toron, would expect Echeverria to improve on that. Yeah, he had a fantastic 2018, you know, really broke through, and he has actually been, you know, quoted as saying, 8 to 79 the world indoor record at some point he hopes that's in his sights well he won eight of his ten competitions last year did juan miguel echeverry the only man who beat him last year was luvo and manyonga of south africa who he went on to uh, turn over in the world indoor championships in birmingham of course so he's already been uh, beaten by more people apart from manyonga than he was beaten by the whole of last year but he started in karlsruhe last year and ominously he went on to set a pb in mets the week after so what has he got in store for this crowd inside Arena Torrent? We'll get the long jump underway very shortly indeed. As we see our shot put athletes preparing. Christian the Swanich uh, has fouled in round two to complete that uh, third round. So the leader is still Dibit Skaya with 18 metres and uh, 84. Schwanitz 18 meters 45 and Jessica Ramsey 18 meters 43. That's the current top three as it stands. Paulina Guba 18.09, the European champion. Anita Martin did improve to 17.56 in uh, round three. So the competitors are being reordered in the shot put. As we pick up live pictures from the long jump, uh, on the runway is Andrzej Kuch the Polish bronze medalist from 2017. Got a tentative approach there from Cook, and he gets the red flag, so one or two uh, rhythmical issues to sort out in the early stages. It was quite a long way over the board. Didn't seem to particularly attack that, Jen. He didn't, did he? I thought he was actually getting a nice, easy one in to <laughs> ensure that he got a few more jumps, but, uh, you know, this is his third competition of the season, so, you know, he has blown the cobwebs away. Um, you know, surely he's local and he's had a go at this runway before. We go back to the track then for heat one of two in the men's 60 metres hurdles. And again, there's two unbeaten athletes lining up across these two heats. We first of all meet the Central American bronze medalist over the 110 hurdlist, Cuba's Roger Iribane, compatriot of Juan Miguel Echeverria. They've got the same kit on as well. In lane eight, we meet the national silver medalist of Germany indoors, Max Bayer. He's already run 7.82, that was in lots on Monday. Lane two, a very consistent performer this year, Dominik Staskiewicz of Poland. All six of his races have between, between 7.91 and 7.98 so far this season, so certainly very consistent. Lane three, the world bronze medalist from 2017, Balas Bay of Hungary. Old University Games champion. Lane six, a seasonal debut for the Brazilian Gabriel Constantino, national champion over the 110 hurdles of Brazil, a world indoor finalist. And then in the middle, the world indoor silver medalist from 2018, unbeaten so far this season, Jarrett Eaton, twice the US indoor champion, 2016 and 2018, beaten by just a vest's width by Andy Pozzi of Great Britain in the World Indoor Finals. We meet David Zabrowski, the national silver medalist from Poland, who ran 7.79, just outside his personal best, on Monday in Lutz. But Eaton in this heat and Orlando Ortega to come in the next one. We'd expect them to be contesting the final later. 
Same as the women, first two automatically through, plus four fastest losers. Well, Constantino on the inside of Rabani, but it's Jarrett Eaton at the moment comfortably. Even clipped a couple of hurdles, I think, but easing down. 7.66 for Jarrett Eaton. As you say, is on a fine European tour at the moment. Three out of three so far this season for Jarrett Eaton and did that very comfortably. He did, he liked that, didn't he? Um, yeah, 7.62 seconds, just outside his season's best so far. Very easy qualification to the next round. It's interesting for an athlete like Jarrett Eaton, isn't it? Because uh, there's no world indoor championships this year as we see them get out of the blocks. Constantino got away uh, pretty well as well. Eaton just clattered that one slightly there, but uh, didn't seem to have any effect. No, absolutely not. He would see another shot of it. Um, you know, first rises first, gets to the first hurdle, just really smooth from there. Um, well, actually, you can see that he's actually not, not that one down, but, um, you know, the strength pays off. It just has a little look to the side and... You know, he's probably quite interested in the time, and I think he's probably, hopefully, to go a little bit quicker in the next round. Yep, certainly seemed to be saving something in the tank there, didn't he, Jarrett Eaton, as he eased down, didn't find too many challenges, uh, giving him particularly too much to worry about there. As you say, the man who, you may remember that agonising wait for both he and Andrew Pozzi of Great Britain in Birmingham when it was a, the tightest of tight photos that Andy Pozzi eventually got the nod on. Yeah, it does. Result. It comes down to minute numbers, doesn't it? And, um, you know, from a British perspective, obviously, we were delighted, but um, it's not the way you don't want to win a world title. Irubani got the nod for second, 7.76, but very tight, 7.77, the trailing positions. Here's the winner from Karlsruhe, got himself 10 points on the IAAF World Indoor Tour. The first round attempt of Tobias Nilsson Montler of Sweden, a huge scout for him in the shape of Echeverria. White flag for Nielsen Motler. It is quite hard without the uh, indicator board on the edge of the pit to work out exactly how uh, roughly how far that is, but we'll keep you up to date as soon as that comes on the computer. There you go, 7 metres 85. Yeah, he's up and running, isn't he? We like to see a white flag. It's a little bit nervous sometimes when you see red flag on the first round, so he's just getting a little bit of advice there from, from his coach. A lot of, course, of advice, actually. Yeah, well, there we go, very animated advice. Of course, for someone like Nielsen Montler, who's already taken 10 points in the IAAF World Indoor Tour, if he can get another great result here today, that puts him in a terrific position to potentially win the title overall, doesn't it? Because who knows how many more of these Echeverria will compete in. Yeah, I mean, we can just see there, you know, he hang, his hang phase is fantastic, but again, he was just a little bit tentative, taken off at the board, um, you know, really gets some really good height and distance, uh, shoots his legs out. Um, yeah, I know, obviously, he'll be hoping to get way over eight metres in the next few rounds. So, Tobias nielsen Montler opening up with a solid enough 7.85 in the men's long jump. We still have the edge of rear there, you can see in the foreground. A little bit of a hitch kick there from uh, Jusk of uh, Poland. Radek Jusk, sorry, Czech Republic, I should say, the European indoor silver medalist. Jusk awaits for his mark. Again, the athletes themselves probably... Uh, don't have a huge idea of exactly how far they've jumped without the uh, help of those indicator boards, which help the crowd as well. We're going to have to get you, Jen, to remember how far eight <laughs> metres is, and then roughly we're going to judge everything against that. 6.89 for uh, Juska. Again, he's uh, an 8.10 jumper on his best, although that was a few years ago, back in 2015. They're not troubling the uh, leading positions currently. Jarvis Gotch of the USA will go next. Finished fourth in the US Indoor Championships Last year, behind some, uh, some pretty good depth to US long jumping, Jaren Lawson, Marquise Dendy, who took the bronze medal of the World Indoor Championships, and Mike Hartfield as well. Jarvis Scott possibly hasn't had the European uh, tour that he would have wanted so far, only managed 7.29 in Karlsruhe. So again, for his, his confidence and for him to build through the season, he could do with a good result here. Yeah, obviously he hasn't got a championship this indoor season, but he's obviously come here looking for some sort of form, but, yeah, I think his foot was over the board there. Yeah, that's a huge foul from uh, Jarvis Gotch. So, again, he appeared to 
approached that pretty tentatively. So round one is a, a foul for him. Yeah, just going having a look at it. Sometimes it really helps. You know, you can see your spike marks in the plasticine, so you know how much to take your mark back by. Yeah, I think probably quite a lot. I think there, as we uh, you might have seen on the scoreboard there, the name of Echevarria suddenly has appeared on there. Let's hope that he can uh, take advantage of what does seem to be a more solid surface. There he is. He certainly dressed, likes to dress flamboyantly, doesn't he? <laughs> We've got the long socks. We've got the headband. And he's got a long run-up as well. He's taking that run-up as far back as he possibly can. Yeah, he's right over, as you can see in the background, the, uh, the track. He's pretty much in lane one, isn't he? Almost. Another step backwards, he would be in lane one. So, didn't go his way particularly the other day, although 808 is by no means uh, a disgrace in terms of a season opener, but I guess his bar has been set so high, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. He's the fifth longest jumper in history, so, you know, we're looking closer to nine metres than eight. Well, his face suggests that he's enjoying it, and he's enjoying this little European trip. What's he got, then, in round one? Oh, the crowd adjacent to the pit like it, that is for sure. And he's got the white flag. Well, you could just see the conviction that he approached the ball with there compared to some of the others that we've seen. And there's his coach, who was applauding quite heavily the other day, even when it didn't quite go uh, maybe to plan. Yeah, that's definitely a look of satisfaction here this evening. 8-12 for Heimegel Echevarria, almost perfect on the board, nearly nailed that. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, you do wonder, that length of his run-up, how you can be so precise on the board. And he does take those couple of sort of shuffle steps at the start, doesn't he? That seems like he's almost just starting when someone's his go, he just starts running. Um, almost, again, how you can be so precise. Often you see athletes you know, literally pace back and take a specific step to start their run-up, but he has those little two or three shuffle steps at the start. He seems to be one of those athletes that really gauges his rhythm and more of a feel rather than, you know, looking at the raw data and, you know, you can just see the images that we can see now, you know, he's just doing a little bit of that to his coach. So here's the lineup for Heat 2 of the men's 60 metres hurdles. And again, a strong Polish contingent, but also Orlando Ortega, right in the centre there, the Olympic silver medalist, unbeaten in 2019 so far. So we meet the athletes from the outside, first of all. Great Britain's Miguel Pereira, first of all, who's fresh off a personal best a couple of days ago, of 7.88, set in lots. Has a Polish coach as well, Jerzy Maszczysiewicz. Polish interest in lane two with Kasper Schubert, who set uh, his personal best here a couple of years ago, of 7.83. The Alabama-based Trinidadian Ruben Walters, making his seasonal debut, goes in lane seven. Very experienced Polish athlete, ten times a national title winner here in Poland, Artur Noga. Set his personal back way back in 2008, 7.64. Milan Trajkovic, fourth place at the Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast of Australia in the early part of last year. For Cyprus, then we move to the Olympic silver medalist, the European bronze medalist, four out of four this year for Orlando Ortega. European indoors, I'm sure, well on the agenda for him. And we finish with the Polish athlete Damian Cikiet, the World University bronze medalist from 2017. Second heat of two in the men's 60 metres hurdles. First two automatically reach the final later.
Ortega in the centre, also Pereira started well on the outside, but now Ortega starts to exert, we've got a faller there in lane seven, Waters went crashing down, 7.56 for Orlando Ortega, and that is just inside his seasonal best, taking three hundredths of a second off that. Yeah, he was smooth, wasn't he, right from the beginning, um, you know, as soon as we saw him come out of the blocks, um, there was never no doubt if he was going to win that one, and he actually rounded down to 7.55 seconds, so four hundredths faster than he's run so far this season. And just a tenth outside is uh, personal best. It was a pretty level break. Just keep a half an eye on Walters in uh, lane seven, who hit three hurdles, then four, went flat down, but comfortable win in the end. Milan Trykovic coming through for second place. Let's have a look at Walters second from the left. If you, uh, he's okay by the way. He's up on his feet. Just again, I'll take a stretch into the very outside of his lane, not quite pushing the boundaries as much as we saw Pamela Dutkovic do. Uh, you want, but you do sometimes see that from athletes, don't you? The way that, uh, I guess, their rhythm and body shape and their lead leg and things, they do bounce from uh, to one side of the lane. Yeah, people have a tendency to favour, you know, left or right side. So, um, yeah, he was the opposite of <laughs> what we've already seen this evening. But uh, it doesn't matter, it works for him. Ortega then takes the victory ahead of Trykovic and Artur Noga. So we're going to go back to the women's shot put. This is Jessica Ramsey, who had a best of 18.43. This is in round four. What can she produce here? Look at the challenge, the lead of 18.84. And that is heading out towards the 19-metre line for Jessica Ramsey. And that measured at 18 metres 73 for Jessica Ramsey, which puts her into second position overall. 11 centimetres behind the leader, Aliona Dubetskaya of Belarus. Christina Swanitz, 18 metres and 45, her best prior to round five. So, approach of the circle is Alonia Dubitskaya of Belarus. Second place, 1884. And again, just coming in short of that 19-metre line. So that looks like an unlikely to be an improvement for Aliona Dubitskaya, European bronze medalist. Through 1894 in Belarus uh, last month. So again, she's coming into this. Sixth in the World Indoor Championships last year. Not lifetime best this year, 1848 in round five. So. No improvement. Relatively consistent series, though, over the, uh, the 18 metres and upper. So 18.48, Fanny Roos and the other shot putters just getting themselves ready as we're heading towards the closing stages of the women's shot. But you're live with us at Arena Toren here in Poland, northern central Poland. Leg three of the IAAF World Indoor Tour, which moves on to Madrid, of course, on Friday. And then Birmingham in the UK, and we close with the finals, of course, in Dusseldorf, back in Germany. This is the long jump, and Tomasz Jaszczuk, the European junior silver medalist. 7.70 in round one, currently has him in third position overall. Echeverria, by the way, 8-12, that is still the uh, the lead. Lashuk psyching himself up. Crowd doing their bit as well, behind uh, home favourite, 7 metres and 70 to improve on. Accelerated into it. Again, it looks uh, with the naked eye, somewhere in the, uh, the mid-7 metres. I think we've been making a few bad guesses, though. If we're going to keep <laughs> trying to judge these, Jim, with the naked eye, we're going to, we're going to end up uh, stitching ourselves up here. So probably best to wait for the computer. That measurement for Yashuk, actually 7.87. So that is a considerable improvement for Thomas Yashuk, and that will lift him up into second place above Nielsen Motler. Yeah, not far off his actual personal best as well, which stands at 7.98. So good improvement. So Nielsen Motler, what's his response going to be? Echeverria's 8-12, by the way, is a new meeting record. He's going to be picking off quite a few records, I think, throughout the course of his year. 
second longest jump indoors this year. Nielsen Montler then, 7.85 in round one. We'll keep an eye on that shortly. So next on track, it's the men's 800 metres, which is a non-scoring event on the tour. There are seven athletes in total. They will be introduced to us very shortly indeed. Eric Sawinski, fresh from Karlsruhe a few days ago as well. Two 800s in the space of uh, four days. Pretty tough. We meet the athletes from the outside. The pacemaker right on the outside is Christoph Turski in the blue vest. National junior champion, which uh, a title he took here. And alongside him in the orange vest, Patrick Kulowski of Poland, a 147 runner last year. The African bronze medalist, Mustafa Smaili, goes in lane five. Sixth for the last couple of World Indoor Championships. Lane four, the Polish junior record holder over 1,500 metres, Mateusz Brokowski. As I say, second in Karlsruhe, when he couldn't quite overhaul Sweden's Andreas Kramer on the line, the USA's Eric Sawinski. Lucas Hodbod of the Czech Republic, the national champion outdoors, has already set 400 and 800 meter PBs this year, so he's flying. 148.9, his 800 mark. And on the inside, the 2016 European bronze medalist from Great Britain, Elliot Giles. Fourth in the World Indoor Championships in his home country of Birmingham, 2018. Five times the national champion. Just say, non scoring event this one. Turski will set the pace, four laps of the track. So the pacemaker, pretty inexperienced, Jim Turski, 18 years of age, what's he on for here? Yeah, he's looking forward to going through 400 metres in around about 52 seconds. You can just see now that he's got to the front, he's cut the break, and uh, it just all depends whether the other guys decide to go with him or not. Well, it's a bit of, as we'd expect, bumping and barging as the athletes settle down. Elliot Giles just came into contact with Lucas Hogbob, but it's Eric Sawinski who tucks in behind the pacemaker at this early stage as they go through in 25-3. Yeah, 25.32 seconds there. Um, you know, they've hopefully run about that for the next circuit as well. Really um, strange for Eric Sawinski to actually, you know, get in there in second place. He's not known as wanting to do that normally. But yeah, he's following this pace. Elliot Giles in third place, second place in the real race. And, uh, you know, they're well strung out, which suggests that they are hitting the pace that they've required to. Well, he's working really hard, the pacemaker at the front, as he hits 52.12 at halfway. Yeah, he's done great. And though you can see he's stepped off the track, Track. Um, his job's done, 450 metres, thank you very much. And Eric Sawinski, you know, finds himself in the lead now on the back straight, followed again by er Elliot Giles and Somali in third place. So Sawinski, who came late off the pace to challenge Kramer the other day in Karlsruhe, all, all of a sudden has Mustafa Smaili starting to loom up behind him, the African bronze medalist, and also Bokowski of Poland has made a strong break round the outside as well. So it's Sawinski from Bokowski on the inside, Smaili. Elliot Giles just finds himself a couple of metres down all of a sudden. Yeah, Sawinski's reading this right from the front here. We see his intentions. Uh, you know, this is where he's really got to dig in the last 50 metres. So Sawinski second in Karlsruhe. Can he hang on here as the challenge has come from Bokowski and Smaili down the outside? But... Sawinski's looking strong and takes it. 147-4, Smiley up a second ahead of Bukowski. Yeah, it was a really well-judged race by Eric Sawinski. Uh, doesn't take many victories. Um, he was second in New York recently, over 600 metres. Second in Carjol recently, over the 800 metres, and he liked that. Yeah, different tactics, I'm sure, when you suddenly find yourself there. But obviously, he knew what the pacemaker was doing, so he decided he was going to uh, find himself in front today. Yeah, and the young pacemaker did a terrific job. You know, he got them to 450, and you know, Eric sat in the second place, and still leading for 350 metres. It's tough, especially when you've got people on your shoulder down that back straight. But he dug in deep, and uh, he'll be delighted with the victory. Well, as we see it uh, start to crank up here, all of a sudden, it was Mateusz Bukowski, the Polish junior record holder, who suddenly uh, appeared as the most likely challenger. Elliot Giles, the uh, European bronze medalist from a couple of years ago, struggled to get into it in the second half. Yeah, he did. He's been doing a lot more endurance work. He's actually ran under sub four minutes recently uh, for, for a mile, which shows great endurance this time of year. So maybe he was just a little bit short of speed, more strength-based at the moment. But yeah, here we go. You know, Eric Sawinski, 
held them off, uh, 147.7, um, you know, not a world leading time, um, but it was just one of those races that you just grit out and you, you're pleased to take the victory. Yeah, as you say, an on-scoring event, the Men's 800 of this year. If you're not familiar with the IWF World Indoor Tour, the events alternate. So the events that are scoring one year are the non-scoring ones the next year. Well, we're really in pole vault country here. They absolutely love their pole vault in Poland, and they're going to hope for some big performances from a couple of their superstars of the national pole vaulting game. We have the small matter of the world champion in the field as well from London 2017. The pole vault men about to be introduced. First of all, from the Philippines, Ernest Obiena, the Asian bronze medalist from 2017. Matej Jezi. Huang of China, the uh, former Asian junior champion, will vault at four. European champion from 2016 from Poland will be the next to come out. That is Robert Sabira. 570 in lots, so he's in good form, as you can see, his season's best there. Now they start to uh, ramp it up a bit for the European Indoor Bronze Medalist, the former world champion, Paweł Wojciechowski of Poland. Again, in great form, 580 the other day in Lutz. Here's the world champion from the USA. He set a world lead of 586 on Friday, but saw it beaten subsequently. Sam Kendricks of the USA. He knows where the cameras are. Come on, Sam, in you come. That's the way. And finally, a huge draw for the world silver medalist from 2017. The world indoor bronze medalist in the last two stages, Piotr Lisek of Poland. And I think we can tell from the volume that welcome those athletes, Jen, that they are hoping for some big things from the, uh, the Polish athletes. I'm looking for some big things as well. This is an event I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, Poland versus America. We've got a um, Chinese athlete there as well, and um, a guy from the Philippines as well. So, yeah, very, very dominant with the pole vaults in our Poland. And it's a huge event at the moment, isn't it? You think of the exciting talents of Armand Duplantis, for example, who, as I said, he toppled Sam Kendrick's world lead of 586 with a 587 in the, uh, the US. Lisek and Wojciechowski just a couple of days ago in lots, uh, both posted 5 meters 80. So we've got three guys here who have kicked off 2019 really well. Yeah, 5 meters 80 is real world class. And it's interesting, isn't it? You know, one centimetre more. It's like the, the news filters down. OK, what has such a done? OK, I'll put, it, I'll put the bar up with a centimetre. Now, just confirmation there of the men's 800 metres result, by the way. Sawinski from Smiley and Borkowski. So we pick up the shot put again, Jessica Ramsey of the USA. This is uh, she's catching up her final round throw as she heads out towards 17 metres. Not happy with that, steps out, red flag to finish the competition for Jessica Ramsey, but she does have a personal best to show for 18 metres and 73, so she can be very happy with her evening's work, which is uh, almost a full half a metre up on her previous best in 2016. Wow, something's gone well this winter. Certainly has. Alina Dubitskaya then in second position currently with 18 metres and 84. She's 13 centimetres behind Christina Schwanitz of Germany, who holds the lead on 18 metres 97. So realistically, to take the victory here, Dubitskaya needs to go over that 19 metre line. It's very, very close. Oh, I think it's just short. Just short, but where? Wow, what a great competition. Well, Dubitskaya, 1894 in Belarus, as we mentioned earlier on last month. It is just short, it is 18 metres and 91 for Dubitskaya. You can see her throw of the hands there as she ends up an agonising six centimetres short. So we know our victor then. It will be a throw of honour for Christina Schwanitz, the 2015 world champion, the European silver medalist in her native Germany 
last summer. 19 metres 16, the second on the world ranking so far in 2019. Can she go over 19 metres to finish this competition in fine style? Again, she's close, but not quite enough, but it is a victory for Christina Schwanitz. 18 metres and 97 centimetres enough to take the victory. The flowers straight in there. <laughs> They're quick with those flowers. The men's 800 exactly the same. It's faster than she even stepped out the circle, Lily, and the, uh, the flowers were in her hand. Great stuff, good competition there. Christina Schwanitz, the victor from Dubitskaya, and Ramsey taking third. Anita Martin, the... Uh, experienced and multi-major medal winning, finishing down in seventh position with 18 metres and three centimetres. The defending tour champion when this event was uh, last stage a couple of years ago. This is the first time the women's shot, by the way, has been staged here in uh, this meeting, the Copernicus Cup in Torun, so something new for the Polish fans to watch. as we confirm that full result for you. And some great uh, little green boxes on there for Roos and Ramsey and Kardash, all with new lifetime bets indoors. Yeah, eight competitors and three personal bets. Schwanitz the victor though, a narrow margin, but a centimetre is enough in the shot put. This is in the pole vault. The first time clearance for Jersey of Poland at five metres and 28. We'll bring some of the opening heights for some of the athletes. The likes of uh, Lisek and Wojciechowski and Kendricks have all passed at the opening height of 5 metres 28. They're going to come in at 5 metres 48. So next to go will be Robert Sabira. On the long jump, meanwhile, with Yashu. Currently in third position. Second attempt. Yashik's best so far is uh, 7 metres 87 that he produced in round two, which currently has him in second position behind Echeverria. 7 metres 82 for Thomas Yashik, so no improvement for him, but a consistent series so far in the first three rounds. Tobias Nilsson Montler, 7 metres 85, the best jump that he's managed so far from his two, but this will be him in round three, a foul in round two. Okay, looking to uh, complete that uh, or carry the confidence forward, I guess, from the other day. If only beat what's in front of you, he'll know that uh, I guess on, on their given day, Echeverria will be well ahead of him, but. If the uh, op opponents have an off day, you've got to take advantage. Absolutely, and he did take advantage. 808, one on count back. Over eight metres is real world class jumping. So, let's see what Nilsson Motler has got then. 808, remember his lifetime best in that competition in Karlsruhe on leg two. If he gets a white flag, he looked pretty good on the board. It is indeed a white flag for Nilsson Motler. We'll wait for that distance to come up. Again, it's, uh, the athletes are finding it hard to judge. It doesn't look overly pleased, but not too disappointed either. Sort of a mixture of both. Yeah, just under 8 metres, 7 metres, 97. So again, you know, showing a great series of consistent jumping. Yeah, consistent series for the uh, 2017 European Under-23 silver medals. Look at that on the board. Perfection, isn't it? Um, you can see he's actually got a little bit of a marker there where he takes um, to a couple of steps forward and it's a bit more measured approach than what we've seen from some of the other jumpers. Well, I'll tell you what, if every jumper could land it on the board like that every time, then uh, I think they'd be pretty happy. <laughs> So now we move onto the flat on the sprint track in the middle of the arena and the first of two heats in the women's 60 metres. All eight lanes in action in this first heat. So first of all on the inside, already in her 10th race of this season, Katarzyna Szakolska of Poland. Lifetime best of 7.41. She's just been just outside that so far this year. National 200 meter bronze medalist from Poland, Agata Fokasiewicz. Goes in lane eight. 
for Great Britain in lane two, set her indoor personal best of 7.21 here last year, Imani Lanzico. As the British Championships coming up in Birmingham this weekend coming, so I'll be looking to lay a good marker down for that. The World Youth Silver Medalist from 2017, just 18 years of age, Magdalena Stefanovic for Poland. The national champion and record holder over 60 metres from the Czech Republic, Clara Seidleva. The national silver medalist from Switzerland, a relay medalist too at the European Under-23s in 2017, Isla Del Pont. Well, this lady's had a great week. 21 years of age, the European Indoor Silver Medalist. And the world leader with that 708, Eva Svoboda. <laughs> she wants them quiet. I don't think she's got any chance. <laughs> no, they've all definitely come here to see her this evening. Yeah. And completing the lineup, the Commonwealth bronze medalist from Jamaica, Gayan Evans, again capable of 714, showing her best form. First two again automatically go through across the two heats, plus the four next fastest. All eyes on Svoboda. 7.08, that world lead. She ran 7.13 the other day, slightly under the weather in lots a couple of days ago. Start and Evans is tracking her. It's still just about Svoboda on the inside. Lantico going very well for Great Britain as well. And Svoboda got it, 7.26. <laughs> Again, that's a bit of a job done face, that one, isn't it? Rather than anything too spectacular. It was. I believe she's got a, quite a heavy cold. Um, hopefully, she can get away with it. 60 metres, you don't need to brave very much, do you, in a 60 metres? But um, yeah, a little bit slower than what she did do um, you know, the last week or so. But. Um, yeah, she got a headache. <laughs> she looked massively pleased with that, doesn't she? There might be a case of coming out tonight and thinking, uh, home fans, uh, let's give them what they want to see. Guy and Evans probably was just slightly marginally better out of the blocks, but this is where Svoboda in the second half of the race. And Imani Lantico finished strongly on the inside as well to come in ahead of Guy and Evans in second place. Yeah, interesting watching that back, actually. She got out really well to Svoboda, but she actually, you know, 10 metres from the finish, she definitely eased off, um, hopefully saving herself for a better performance later in this evening. Well, certainly we'll be looking to lay it down at the European Indoors, which take place in Glasgow at the start of March. Looking to upgrade that silver medal that she won last time out. 7.25, the winning time for Svoboda. Actually, uh, of course, recorded the world lead time in the heat in Karlsruhe. She went uh, 7.08 in the heat and 7.10 in the final. Confirmation, 7.25 for Svoboda and Lantico of Great Britain did get second, 7.27. The rest will have to wait and see if they are among the next four fastest. Gayan Evans, the uh, Commonwealth bronze medalist, by the way, is the defending tour winner from uh, two years ago, 2017. So we go to the pole vault next. We're live pictures now with Jerzy of Poland, who currently is about to attempt five metres and 48 for the first time. So far, clear, Robert Sabera of Poland. Also, Huang of China is clear. Obiena of Philippines clear second time. And he's failed once at 5.48. So, again, so far, Lisek, Wojciechowski and Kendricks due to enter the competition at this height. Jerzy, by the way, has already vaulted higher than he did in the whole of last year with 5 metres and 40, so this would be another improvement on that if he could clear this. Not to be this time. Seemed to have the height, but uh, in the end just came down on it. Yeah, it's such a technical event, isn't it? And these pole vaulters really rely on a lot of feedback from the coaches. They're just looking now, you know, where did I plant the pole? How do I do it? Come in a little bit too fast? You know, looking for lots of advice there. 
I'm sure great for uh, the likes of Jersey to be in the same competition as the likes of Lisek and Wojciechowski as well, and to just to watch how they go about their business. I mean, you can't exactly copy what they do because everyone has their own techniques, but you can just see how they carry themselves, can't you, and deal with the competition. He can. I'm sure he's amongst some of his heroes. He'll have watched some of these athletes compete on television, and now he's amongst them. So a bit of feedback for Jersey, who has two more attempts left at uh, 5 metres and 48. So you can see absolute full house here at Arena Torren. It might look nice and warm inside, by the way, but it's uh, a very snowy scene in Torren at the moment. Nice and warm as we stay inside, though, as we see the Heat 2 start list in the women's 60 metres on the flat. So we'll meet them in lane order. Bianca Williams of Great Britain on the inside, the national bronze medalist over 60 metres, European Championship relay gold medalist. The national silver medalist from Poland, part of the European Championship relay team, Kamila Chiba. Fourteen times the national champion of Poland, Marika Popovic Drapala. Goes in lane two, just about fit her name on the bib. The one under 20 bronze medalist from last summer in Finland and the Polish junior record holder, Martina Kotkila. European Championship relay silver medalist from the Netherlands, Naomi Sedney. The world indoor silver medalist and a double world silver medalist over 100 and 200 metres. Defending champion here as well from the Ivory Coast, Marie-Jose Talou. Three times the NCAA colleges champion in the US from Jamaica, Ramona Birchall. And finally, in lane five, the world indoor finalists from 2018. She set a PB in the heats of that championship, Carol Zahi of France. First two again go through, plus the four fastest losers. All eyes really on Talu. In lane six. Talu out very well, and Zahi got away well, and also going well. Birchill inside here. It's Talu and Birchill at this stage, and Talu takes it 7.16 again. Looking to have plenty in the tank there, Marie Jose Talu, kicking off her season here, around 7 11 here in the, uh, the final last year. But again, comfortable, smooth progress. It was. I believe she's doing four races this indoor season. This is the first one. A victory here this evening. Just rounded down to 7.15 seconds. She was a whole tenth faster than Savoda did in the, um, her heat. So, yeah, we'll see how much Savoda was holding back once we come to that final. Well, Talu has said she's specifically in this indoor little mini run, as you say, for just four meetings, looking to work on her start and her finish, which in a 60 is uh, most of the race, really, isn't it? <laughs> it Let's is. face it. Well, the start was very good. Um, the dry phase was good, and she was still pulling away at the end. Um, silver medalist over 100 metres and 200 metres, so she's got the speed and she's got the strength, and, you know, she delivered there in that 60 metres. Yeah, beaten by her compatriot Muriel Ahure, of course, in Birmingham in the World Indoor Championships, confirmation of her winning time of 7.15, ahead of Ramona Birchall of Jamaica, 7.21. Zahi and Williams hoping for those next fastest spots. So we go back to the pole vaults and live pictures. The first vault of Sam Kendricks. 
the world champion. He's coming into the competition at 5 metres 48. Again, great to have the likes of Sam Kendricks coming over, particularly with the no major indoor global champs. He's warming up for the US champs potentially as he takes on 548. Oh, I mean, he makes light work of that, doesn't he? <laughs> Could have done that with a blindfold on, could he, and a cigar in one hand. I think that's uh, as comfortable as it comes for Sam Kendricks. Great stuff from him. And again, great for the meeting, as we say, this uh, RWF World Indoor Tour, to have stars of the likes of Sam Kendricks and others, and the likes of Echeverria here. And that is uh, just a bit of a loosener. I was reading a, an article on the IWF website, a little video with Sam Kendricks, actually, who says he carries a... Look how far over that is. Um, he carries a baseball everywhere with him. Uses it as a bit of a rehabilitation, uh, a bit of throwing practice when he's bored as well, does uh, Sam Kendricks. So, coming up shortly, the women's 800 metres next on track, and potentially a very exciting contest the likes of Laura Muir who is going to be attacking a British record so the crowd getting ready for something special on the track over four laps that is the lineup for the first page of the lineup anyway Great Britain's Laura Muir sub two minute runner she's got her eye on a time of one minute 58 0.43. I'll tell you more about that in a second as we see the uh, second page. Patricia Pachiskovic will be the pacemaker, by the way. So, this is me, Chris Temple, but more importantly, this is Jenny Meadows. And Jenny, we're showing you now because you have the British record over 800 metres that Laura Muir is about to try and break. I do. I How do, do you feel about that? Nervous moments, Chris. I can't <laughs> lie. Um, Great athlete, Laura Muir, of course. Um, you know, she's got the range from 800 metres all the way to 5,000 metres, but uh, I don't know if I'm ready to lose it or not. <laughs> well, we'll talk about how well she'll have to run to... Uh, to and this is not bigging you up, Jen, but it's a very, very good time that is uh, uh, flirting with the top ten in the world uh, of all time indoors. As we meet the pacemaker, Patricia Vichiskiewicz, on the outside. Here is the uh, part of the European Championship 4x4. Four winning team or the silver medal I should say she's going to set the pace and she's got a job on that is for sure but we think she's up to it Sophia Enoui the European silver medalist over this distance in Berlin from Poland sharing the next lane and Lemu of Ethiopia alongside Renal Lamotte the double European silver medalist 2016 and 2018 and there is Habitam El Lemu who set a 1,500 metres personal best here last year. The double European champion indoors. The 1,500 metres European champion, Laura Muir, alongside Selena Bouchel, twice a European indoor champion in 2015 and 17. And they're sharing that lane three. Then we move to Anna Sabat, the national champion of Poland. Fifth at the European Championships. Uh, 158 runner outdoors, Nelly Jepkoskai of Kenya. 201, her lifetime best indoors. A run on the inside, sharing that inside lane. Olha Lyakova, the European bronze medalist from Berlin last summer outdoors. And completing that field, Rabab Arafi, Olympic and world finalist and the African silver medalist over 1,500 metres. So away they go then, Laura Muir coming out of lane three. Remember the time she's looking for is 1.58.43, set by Jenny Meadows alongside me in Doha in 2010 when you picked up your world silver medal indoors, Jen. It was, and the pacemaker's been given a really realistic time of 28 seconds and 58 seconds, and then go as far as you can. But this field is in abundance of riches, there's talent everywhere you look. This is reminiscent of a world championship you know, indoor final, and 27.47 seconds, it's very quick. We can see Laura Muir there, sat in, in about fifth place, probably doing what she needs to do. Yeah, well, she'll be looking to defend her, her titles, of course, at the European Indoor Championships coming up. She'll be on home soil in Glasgow as well, and she's run, currently running in sixth position. It's Alemu and Jep Koskai currently who are the ones who are trying to go with this fierce pace being set by Vajiskovic. Yeah, it's a great pace, and Alemu's a great athlete. 
21, um, her outdoor personal best. And it's faster than the vast, it's 57.15 seconds. And again, if you can see where Laura Muir sat, she's probably right where she needs to be, around 58 seconds. And you'll see the strength come from Laura now as she takes the jet cross guy on that back straight and she chases after Alamu. This is really ideal for her. They've still got the pacemaker all the way here at 5.50. Alamu in second place, Laura Muir in third place. And it really is just how fast can these girls run now. So Alamu comes up onto the shoulder of the leader. Laura Muir in third place, but Vichiskovic will now step off, which leaves Alamu in front. Laura Muir is right on her shoulder. They're starting to bunch up in behind. Jeff Koska has fallen away. Lamotte has made progress. Also from the back of the field as well, but it's a lay move for Muir at the moment. And Nui has moved up into third position as well. Remember that British record time is 1.58.43 as Laura Muir comes round into the home straight now. Onto the shoulder of her B2, Alemu. Has Muir got the strength in the home straight? Keep an eye on that clock as well. Alemu digging in and moving out to lane two. Laura Muir driving on now up towards the line. 1.59.51 is the winning time just outside the British record. But it is in the win for Alemu, a meeting record for her. Yeah, Je sub two minutes indoors. It's world class. Um, sometimes you get a season when no one breaks it. So 159.51 is great. And, you know, Laura's personal best is 159.69. She's bang on the money there. So tough race, but um, it was the race we wanted. It was a fantastic race. And I think it comes back to the fact, as you said, it was such a loaded race that in the end, uh, you know, when you, sometimes if you have it as a bit of a time trial, it can possibly be easier running, I guess, uh, chasing the hair. But here, she had to worry about everybody else. And, and Lamu, let's not discredit a great run from her up front. Yeah, 159.5 seconds is a fantastic race. Um, you know, fantastic time. Very much so. I don't know if anyone will actually break that the rest of the indoor season. So that could actually end up being a world lead at the end of the 2019 World Indoor Series. Laura's really trying, you know, working really hard to try and get her on the line, but Alamu just holds on. And actually, third place, Sabira Nui, um, you know, more known for 3,000 metres and 1,500 metres. She goes up across country. That was a great time for her in third position as well. Contrast on the faces there. Alemu looked pretty relaxed, didn't she? But Laura Muir was uh, giving absolutely everything there, which, again, we know an athlete of Laura Muir's calibre uh, for Alemu to seemingly... I mean, she was obviously working hard, but you wouldn't have known it from her face there necessarily, but maybe now for the recovery, we probably do. But a sub-two-minute run for uh, B2 El Habitam Alemu, the national record holder for Ethiopia outdoors, which is no mean feat in itself to be uh, the fastest runner outdoors over that particular distance, 800 metres. Good run from the Nui as well, as you said, Jen, European silver medalist from 2018. We came through strongly in the, uh, the second half of the race as well. Yeah, they've worked hard, those girls, you can tell. So Laura Muir, by the way, who's going to be running over 3,000 metres in the British Championships at the, uh, the weekend, taking on the winner from Karlsruhe. And despite the fact it's outside the, uh, the British record, it is still a lifetime best for Laura Muir over that distance, Jen, 155.95. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what Laura decides to do at the um, Glasgow European Championships. I think, you know, 800, 1500 metres, 3000, she's got a pick, really. Yeah, well, she did the, uh, the 1500 and 5000 double uh, in the, uh, the World Championships in 2017 outdoors. So, again, her focus long term will be when well, you've got that versatility across the distances. She's doing 800 here, she could be doing up to 5000. Fantastic uh, versatility for her to have, and certainly she'll be looking to challenge the East Africans. So we just saw some shots there from Karlsruhe of Tobe of Japan, who lit up that meeting. As we meet this evening's field here, Mohamed Hamdi, the world junior bronze medalist from 2016, already set a new lifetime best of 2 metres and 20 so far this year. The world champs, of course, in his home country. Norbert Kobielski, national silver medalist, which he won here in Torun with 2 metres 20 last year. Also has jumped 2 metres 20 already this year. Iliana Ivanyuk, an authorised neutral athlete. A Russian who, uh, European bronze medalist 2018. Also a European under 23 champion, enjoying the music as he came out. He potentially is the one to beat on form. Donald Thomas of the Bahamas. We saw him in Karlsruhe, if you're watching Commonwealth Games, fourth placer. Big character, extremely experienced, 2007 world champion from Osaka. 
Also a man with fine calibre, the European indoor champion, Sylvester Vednarek. 233, his best from 2017. 17 top national titles he's won here in Poland throughout his career. And finally, Trey Kolba. Two-time NCAA champion of the US, but he's had a disappointing European tour so far. Just managed 213 in Kaldra, only cleared one bar and then retired from uh, his next meeting since then. So again, I think he's come here to rebuild a bit of confidence. That's the full lineup, that's the six. And Ivanuk, you'd have to say, uh, on form and on those seasons best as well. The calibre, he probably is the the one to beat, Sylvester Bednarek, though, will certainly throw down a challenge uh, to him. Back we go live with the men's pole vault. Jerzy, third attempt here at 5 metres 48. So he has to get this to stay in the competition. And he doesn't. So the competition over for Matthias Jerzy of Poland. So far clear, Piotr Losek, first time clear at 5.48. The eye-catcher so far, Jenny, in the pole ball is that Pavel Wojciechowski has failed twice at 5 metres 48. Not what we would expect. Um, obviously, he's only come into the competition at 5 metres 48. He thought 5.28 was below him. So, yeah, let's hope he can get it on the third attempt. This is the long jump, meanwhile, and Rosanski of Poland. Currently on the uh, the runway in round five. Rosanski's best so far, 7 metres 58, has him in fifth position. Echeverria hasn't registered another legal jump since his opening round of 8.12, by the way, but still holds the lead. Two fouls and a pass for Echeverria. So again, he's uh, managing himself conservatively, but still probably not quite the rhythm that he's looking for, as we see a replay of that. Effort from Matthias Rosanski. As I say, set a lifetime best just on Sunday, 7.79. And that 7.46 is no improvement. So back to the track we go, and the women's 400 metres, which is a non-scoring event. There are two finals, if you like, listed as a heat, but uh, the collated results will give our overall winner. Five athletes go in heat one. On the outside, first of all, eight times the national champion of the Netherlands, Madea Gafour. Polish indoor champion over 200 metres, Anna Kielbasinska. Who hails from Sopot, where the world champs from 2014 indoors, of course, were staged. First leg of the 4x4 European Championship win was run by this lady for Poland, Małgorzata Olek Kowalik. The national junior champion outdoors for Poland, Natalia Kaczmarek. And out of lane two, the vastly experienced two-time world champion over the 400 metres hurdles, European indoor silver medalist on the flat in 2017, Susanna Heinova, 32 years of age. Not the ideal lane in the 400 metres off the inside in lane two. Heat one of the women's 400 metres, two laps. Z 
So away they go. Now often in the 400 metres, the outside lanes prove to be a big advantage. There is a bit of a feeling here that maybe lanes four and five might be the, the stronger advantage. And Kiel Biasinska from lane five in the black is already up on go four outside her. Yeah, she's started incredibly well, as she said, in Coventry first, you know, she's former 200 metre athlete. 200 metres is really important, getting out there in an indoor 400 metres. But as we can see, it's a battle for the break, and she just takes it ahead of Gafu from the Netherlands. So it's Kiel Bosinska at the moment ahead of Gafu, and Susanna Hayden have got herself into third position, also going well down the back as well, moving down the outside hole of Kovalek, but it's still just about Kiel Bosinska, but now the athletes starting to loom up beyond. Susanna Hayden moves into second place, now Holland Kovalik coming around the outside as well as the 200 meter specialist Kielbasinska got the strength in the home straight as the charges come down the outside Kielbasinska still going still going and wins it Kielbasinska a gun to take victory by 53.20 and for a 200 meter specialist that was a fine run it was I think she really benefited from the lane that she had first and foremost having that 200 meter speed to be able to get out ahead of the others it's a completely different event 400 meter running indoors compared to the outdoor equivalent and it, you know you can see actually on the back straight everyone was fighting for the same sort of distance and other than the winner everyone came across the line at a very very similar um, time so um, yeah 200 meter running hurts <laughs> she's, she's smiling for the camera but uh, that's hard work here this evening well you used to run your fair share of 400 as well I mean, you like to run your 800s from the front as well but it gets a time I suppose when you're expecting in your wing mirrors to start seeing the challenges and there she just that probably a couple of meters she bought herself there probably in the end was the difference yeah definitely I think Haniva we expected that she would come through the athlete from the Czech Republic she's a very very strength based athlete um, but yeah you know all credit um, to the athlete who went on to win that race there well Kiel Basinska kept up to her, didn't look around at all, she just kept focused ahead of her, didn't worry about what was coming in the end, which was a three abreast challenge. We're live with the pole vault as we pick up Wojciechowski. Third attempt at 5.48, this is a guy who cleared 5.80 just a couple of days ago, home favourite. Oh no! Well, he was so high and then just came down so steeply. Yeah, the height was definitely there. I think that's probably more of a technical issue rather than lack of ability. Um, obviously, it's not what the home crowd wanted. It's not what he came for this evening. He's obviously in great shape. You know, we know that he did five metres 80 at the weekend. Just again, you know, looking for a little bit of advice from his coach. But uh, yeah, he throws, he throws the bar away. Well, just, I mean, we talk about technical, uh, technical, I guess, difficulties there. I mean, some would say, how can you jump 580 one day and 548 the next? How can the technique change so much in the space of three days? Yeah, I think sometimes it's down to different run surfaces. Sometimes you have, you know, a surface that's really quick. The surfaces are pretty slow, so have more spring. Um, I'm not an expert at the pole vault, but this is why I'm here. Well, this guy's an expert at the long jump, Juan Miguel Echeverria. This is the fifth round for him. He's still the leader with 8 metres 12. And again, uh, a good hitch kick. Shake of the head from him. He's still got quite a lot of distance behind the board there. He's you know, losing quite a few centimetres. And his approach just seems really rugged. Not technical, not planned out like some of the other athletes. Um, definitely when he gets it right, he goes a long way. Oh dear, <laughs> there you go. As we said, he, he almost nailed the board the previous one, but again, it's, he seems to be quite inconsistent. There's no doubt about his speed and power on the runway, but it's just that rhythm there, and if you're not uh, propelling yourself off the board, you've immediately lost yourself 20 centimetres, haven't you? Yeah, I think in excess of that, probably 30 centimetres. Again, you know, he's asking his coach for a little bit of advice, but I think he is just one of those athletes, when he gets it right, he'll go a long way. I don't know whether it looks like he's just trying a little bit too hard. 776. Big distances, yeah. yeah. And again, the, uh, sometimes the, uh, he's only young. I guess we keep remembering he's only 20. We're expecting huge things of him on a, an, a very, very consistent basis. But uh, as we confirm results, uh, in fact, we look at the field rather for heat two of the women's 400 metres. Remember, no final of the women's 400 metres, just two straight heats with the collated times. But the 400 is a, a non-scoring event in the IAAF World Indoor Tour. Ten points for the winners of those, remember, as we meet, first of all, on the outside, the double European champion, huge home favourite, Justina Svieti Esetic. Eight times a major medalist.
Lane 5, the European 400 meters hurdles champion on the flat on the indoor, Lea Sprunger, the tour winner from last year, 2018, when this was a scoring event. Second in the world rankings this year. Iga Baumgart Vitan, the world leader, 52.13, that lifetime best that she set. That is the fastest time in the world this year. She's out of lane four, representing Poland. The European bronze medalist and national record holder of the Netherlands, Lisanne de Witt. Has a younger sister, Laura, of course, who also competes over these distances. Better an athlete who, down the years, has been more known towards the 800 metres, but Joanna Joszwik of Poland. The European indoor bronze medalist from 2015, hasn't run indoors over 400 for four years. And finally, on the inside, Karolina Losowska, who's also set her lifetime best this year of 54.76. So four poles in the field of six. Sviti Esetic there. The double European champion in the space of 90 minutes in Berlin, individually and in the relay. Side, Sveti Asetic ran quite a disappointing 54.2 in being beaten by Great Britain's Lavia Nielsen in Sweden on Monday. So she'll be looking for an improvement on that time. And Lea Sprunger, the 400 meters hurdles runner, is already up on her inside from lane five. Also going well is Baumgart beaten inside her as they chase for the break at the bell. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting race actually. Again, you know, as we've seen in the previous heat, it's all about what happens that first 200 meters. Similar pace, 24 and a half seconds at the bell. So as they take it round in the early stages, Baumgart Vitan is the leader from Sprunger. Now Sviti Asetic down the back straight trying to make her move, but it's the world leader at the moment, 52-1-3 already this season for Poland's Igor Baumgart Vitan. It's a Polish 1-2 at the moment as they come into the home straight. Still Baumgart Vitan working hard. Sviti Asetic trying to close the gap down the outside, but Baumgart Vitan will hang on here and she wins it ahead of Sviti Asetic. Sprunger in third and De Vita comes home in fourth. Yeah, 51.91 seconds. That's a new world lead so Baumgart Vitan taking two tenths of a second off her fastest time in the world this year 51.91 a world lead for the Polish athlete European relay gold medalist indoor and out as well and under a bit of pressure from Sveti Asetic down the home straight as well. Yeah, we always expect Sveti in this to finish really, really strong. She's, you know, really now known for that. But, um, yeah, she just dug in really, really well here. The last 100 metres, you can see she's grimacing. She's giving everything that she's got. Not only is it a world lead, but it's also a personal best, this young athlete. Great space to do it as well in front of your home fans as well on what uh, appears to be quite a fast track. I know you were finding out earlier on, Jen, that this track is uh, the same one used in Sopot in 2014. Yeah, those World Indoor Championships, there was a lot of great performances there, and they moved the track over to this venue, so, you know, Tarana benefited. <laughs> Absolutely. Baumgart Beaton just holding off the uh, attentions there of uh, relay teammate Justina Sviti Asetic. There's confirmation. And Justina Sviti has said it's taking two seconds off that time that she produced in Sweden on uh, Monday, as we say, when she ran 54-2. Leia Springer, uh, Leia Springer, rather, 52-48 in third. There's our winner. At the moment, no rush to uh, get herself off the infield. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a case of, you know, whether you can, it's just you can't. You need to just sit there for a little while, recover. Sam Kendricks in the pole vault, who passed at 5.58. Currently, first attempt at 5 metres and 68 for the world champion. Piotr Lisek, by the way, has also passed at 5 metres and 58. All other competitors, by the way, failed at 5.48. So it's a two-man competition, as Kendricks, again, makes it look very easy. Oh, he makes it look so great, doesn't he? He's in two blind form. So a two-man competition there now, and Lisek and Kendricks will Move up the heights. Yep, thumbs up, he's happy. 
Well, they may well have their eye on the uh, the meeting record here in the uh, the men's pole vault as well, uh, which stands at five meters ninety-one. So with both the men, maybe it's asking a little bit too much. I know Piotr Lisek mentioned that in advance of uh, the competition, but he was probably expecting his teammate Wojciechowski to be, uh, I guess, a little bit more of a challenger today, rather than crashing out at five meters and forty-eight. So here is Lisek. This is his first attempt coming up at five sixty-eight as well. Another one who's defending the Tour title, as we say, this event non-scoring this year, but when it was last scoring in 2017, he did set the meeting record here, 5 metres 91. So he likes this runway, likes this surface, likes the crowd, I'm sure. First attempt, 5.68. Can we see some fireworks today from this man? Again, just as good as Kendricks, just as comfortable. Just looking like they're bubbling up nicely here for a cracking competition between these two gents. Yeah, this is going to be a great duel. It's actually interesting, look at the different body compositions of the two athletes as well. There you go. They're right to, to prove your point there. Lisek is a, a raw, powerful guy, isn't he? And Sam Kendrick's much slighter in build. Yeah, it takes all sorts, but you can see he's just really using all his force, all his trajectory there to get over that bar. And again, you know, there was daylight between himself and the bar. Well, all that muscle is going to weigh quite a bit as well, so he's going to have to work just as hard to get all that muscle up and over the bar, for sure. But Lisek delighting the home crowd here. So only two athletes remaining, that is uh, already a head-to-head. -head. The bar will next go up to 5 metres and 78 in the pole vault as we pick up Yashuk in the long jump here. We're into the final round. Thomas Yashuk currently in third position with 7 metres and 87, which was his second round jump. Tobias nilsson montler in second with 7.97. Can he overhaul him in this final round with the leader still, as it has been since round one, the world indoor champ Echeverria with 8.12. Polish crowd, though, behind Jaszczuk. Accelerating into the board. It looked a good jump. It looked like he's going to get the white flag. Yeah, indeed he does. White flag for Jaszczuk, a former European junior silver medalist. I say former, once you've won the medal, it's uh, yours to keep. So away for the measurement. It is 7.72 for Thomas Jaszczuk, so no improvement, but he will finish in third position at the leading of the Polish quartet involved this evening. So to see it again, it's a more sedate round, isn't it? And then he really starts to accelerate into the board. Yeah, he builds into it. He starts quite moderately. Um, a lot of jumpers have got different techniques. So the first of two heats in the men's 400 metres. At each of these two heats, we have the winners of the first two IAAF World Indoor Tour events of this season. Nathan Stropper of the USA. As we meet, first of all, the European Indoor Silver Medalist from 2017 from Poland, Rafa Amelko. Right on the outside in lane six. This is the winner from Boston then, the opening meeting of this year's tour. Took 10 points from that, and he's come across to try and haul in another 10. Nathan Strother of the University of Tennessee. Then a Dutchman, the European indoor bronze medalist from the Netherlands, Lee Marvin Bonavassia. So European bronze medalist outdoors in 2016. Home interest in the European under-23 relay silver medalist, Darius Kabalok. The Warsaw club vest on there. Part of the 4x4 European Indoor Championship winning relay in 2017, Pramislav Bershinsky. We'll go in lane two and right on the inside in lane one. Another promising Polish athlete, 20 years of age. He's already run over 200, 300, and 400 metres this season, Maximilian Klopatsky. All eyes on Stroller, one from the outside in lane five of the USA.
So away they go, 46.97, the best time at Strotha, one from the left of that field as we look at them, and the orange with the black shorts. Got starting well is Kovalik coming out of lane three, and just outside in Bonavassia of the Netherlands, up on the inside of Strotha now, who's going to have to have a strong second half of the race, because as the stagger unwinds, Amelko comes across from the outside. Yeah, it was a great, ooh, actually, we're just watching there, you've got to be so, so careful in this event. Someone just got their heels clipped there, but Strother's working really, really well down, back straight now. Um, it's really difficult to sometimes gauge your effort, but yeah, he's hit the front with 300 metres to go. Well, Nathan Strother of the USA looking to give himself a huge propeller in the right direction towards the IAAF World Indoor title. He's coming away with this. What a comprehensive performance in the USA's Nathan Strother, 46.34. In the end, Melko hangs on for second ahead of Bonavassia, 46. 6-3-4 from Nathan, Nathan Strother, and that is uh, six tenths of a second faster than he's produced this year. Yeah, convincing win, wasn't it? He actually almost fell out of the box. I didn't think he started well whatsoever, and only to hit the bell in around about third position. But on that back straight, he just really came into his own. Um, doesn't look too tired either, does he? There's a little bit of a coming together that you spotted, Jen, as they came round, as you often get. Bonifacio just got squeezed up on the inside, didn't he? I don't know if he got clipped from behind or from the side from Strother, but the running room and the curb there just really gave Bonifacio a bit of a nudge, which in turn nudged Strother outwards, but uh, no, no impact on the American for sure. No, he handled that really well, didn't he? Um, it's such a different event, as I keep saying, indoors, and everyone's trying to buy for the same space. You wouldn't want it to go that fast, the first 200, normally, in an outdoor equivalent. Confirmation 46.32 from Strother, the fastest time of, that he's produced in the world this year, ahead of Amelco and Bonavessi. <laughs> So, final round of the long jump. It is Tobias Nielsen Montler. He's got to improve on 8 metres and 12 to try and challenge the lead and make it a double over Echeverria potentially. Well, it looks in the similar ballpark that he produced earlier on. And in fact, confirmation 7 metres 90, so it's not going to challenge the lead. It's second place for Nielsen Montler, but a very consistent series there. Yeah, he's got some good points on this side of the F World Tour. So he picks up seven points for second, that leaves him with 17 overall. As we see, live pictures of Juan Miguel Echeverria. Final round. He was way behind the board in that fifth round, 776. Two fouls and a pass. Between that and his first round of 8 metres and 12, it is his season's best, it is an improvement by 4 centimetres on Karlsruhe on Saturday. What has he got here? Can he improve his new meeting record even further? The man from Cuba, the world indoor champion. Again, looks to have a little bit to spare on the board. He's going to get a, a white flag. He's the winner of the competition. He picks up the 10 points this evening. So, reversal of the placings with Nielsen Montler from Karlsruhe as we wait for confirmation of the distance. 7 metres 82 confirmation for Echeverria. And again, he's uh, just, you see me non plus and his newest, latest European rival, Nielsen Montler, with a little hug there. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he needs to keep the flowers or get a tape measure instead. I'd like to see him actually, you know, have a really good measurement uh, run up. So a, bit, a bit more consistency definitely needed. Well, he's got a bit of time. Again, I guess for the likes of Echeverria, who's going to be targeting the world outdoors. So we see that uh, board. I thought he was closer on the board with a naked eye, but when you see it back like that, that's uh, he's so far short, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely given away around about 30 centimetres, which would bring him right up to the 8.12 that he actually recorded when he was bang on the board and on the first jump. Well, that's the thing about long jump, it's piecing everything together, isn't it? It's piecing the power on the runway, the rhythm, your placement, using everything you can to gain every centimetre on the board, and then that power through the air as well. But 8-12, it is an improvement. He's going in the right direction rather than the wrong one. Confirmation of the final standings there. Ten points for Echeverria. Takes him to 17 overall, and Montler also has 17, so those two tied at the top of the standings. Sam Kendricks in the pole vault. 5 metres 78, he has failed once while we were watching our last track event. So this is his second attempt at 5 metres and 78. Uh, Lissek, of course, also uh, failing, by the way, at 5.78, so both are on to second attempts. This two-man pole vault competition, if you're just joining us, a bit of a surprise with the 
three-time failure of Pavel Wojciechowski at 5 metres and 48. Yeah, just produced that on the Open 580 a couple of days ago. Sam Kendricks waits for his moment then. 586, the best he's produced this year. Capable of six metres, exactly six metres is his best outdoors. Indoors his best is five metres, 93. He's the world leader last year, by the way, with 593 as well. He, he and Renault Le Villani both produced that at the same meeting in France. Here we go, second attempt, 578, Kendricks. Gave it a tickle. But it stays up. Yeah, that gives him the advantage. Both athletes have got the same scorecard until that moment. He like that. Yeah, that does put a bit of pressure now on the, on Lisek, as you say, the countback situation. They do have exactly the same. Two first-time appearances and one failure prior to that appearance by Kendrick. Yeah, just gave it the slightest little tickle, didn't he, with his, uh, with his chest or his shoulders he came over, but... Smile tells you the story. So Piotr Lisek takes to the runway for Poland. As we move to the second heat of the men's 400 metres, five athletes in this one. Right in the centre, one of the greatest of all time at this distance indoors, Pavel Maslak. On the outside, though, Karol Zaleski of Poland, twice the European under 23 champion, over 200 metres, a often rarely run distance at championship level, the 200 metres, just one lap of the track. Luka Janosic, fastest man across the 400 metre runners this year. 46-1-3, set in Vienna last week. Here's Pavel Maslak, three times the world indoor champion, three times the European indoor champion. And the winner in Karlsruhe, ten points on his record already. Again, a win here would put him in pole position to take the indoor title. Miguel Santos, world bronze medalist from 2013, Olympic silver medalist from 2012 from the Dominican Republic. And in lane two, completing the lineup. Another one of the uh, Polish relay squad from the European Championships, Kajeta and Dushinsky. Second heat then of the men's 400 metres. Match luck out of lane four. Lisek, by the way, in the pole vault, failing his second attempt at 5.78. One left shortly. Kendrick's clear, remember. So away they go, well, Strother and Maslach, the winner of the first two events individually. Strother, 46.32 was his winning time from the first heat. The two heats will be collated. The ten points will go to the best time over those two heats. And Pavel Maslach has started very strongly here, already through on the inside of Janicic. And also right on the outside, Karol Zaleski, who led for a long time in Karlsruhe as they battle at the break. Yeah, Mashlan's hit that under 22 seconds. Looks like it's going to be a good finish position. He's such a strength-based athlete. He's got the speed and he's also got the strength to get out there. Well, he came off the pace to overhaul Zalewski in Karlsruhe four days ago, but he's opened up an advantage here. It is Maslak, four or five metres clear of Zalewski. They come into the home straight. 46.32 is the time to keep an eye on the clock as he comes up towards the line, storming down the home straight outside him is Jasinski as well. 46.21. And Pavel Maslak overhauls the time of Nathan Strother by a tenth of a second. And that will give him the ten points and make it two out of two for him in the IWF World Indoor Tour. It will. That's his third race this season. He started with 47.1, 46.7, and now he's took another half a second off that. 46.19 seconds rounded down to. So his time's definitely going in the right direction as it builds towards Glasgow European Indoor Championships. So we're back live in the pole vault. Ten points to Pavel Maslak in the 
men's 400 meters. So this is make or break for Piotr Lisek. Two big Polish hopes coming into this pole vault. Uh, Wojciechowski crashing out earlier. And with Kendricks clear, Kendricks will win. And this, Lisek gets this. The whole of Arena Torin behind him. Not to be. 5,199 people inside here. Groaned. Only Sam Kendricks, I think, allowed himself a little bit of a smile. Second place for Lissing. Yeah, competition's amazing between these two guys. And I think a lot of the pole vaulters really have a great camaraderie. They respect what, you know, the training that it takes for these guys to do well. Uh, it's definitely not for the faint-hearted, having to haul yourself, you know, over a bar that stands almost six metres in height. Um, I thought it was a really good attempt, actually. He just fell away towards the end of it. Um, you know, the height was there, but you see he just caught it on his way down. Um, his quad first and then his chest, and you can see, you know, agonizingly <laughs> close, and he knew it. Well, when your chest and your quads are as big as Piotr Lisek are, unfortunately, that is a bit of a hindrance if you give it a, a nudge, isn't it? Unfortunately, it's usually coming down, I think. So Lisek crashes out at 578, which means that Kendricks is the winner. His confirmation, by the way, of the second of those men's 400-metre finals, and Maslak's 46.19, good enough to take the overall 10 points in the indoor tour, which puts him on 20 and Stroffer on 10. So we're going back onto the straight and the women's 60 metres hurdles final coming next. So away they go first time, Dukovic and Kolacek, as you'd expect, going out well, and Britain as well, going strongly as well. It's even Britain just at this stage, but now Dukovic's going to come through, and Dukovic and Britain in the end, just edging out Kolacek into third position. Pamela Dukovic, 8.04, the official winning time. Once again away cleanly, and Herska got a flyer in lane three, and it's her leading at the moment from Roller. Also coming through Sissiertz on this near side, but Herska holds on tight for second. Sissiertz and Herman was coming late as well, but Rita Herska is really having a fine couple of weeks. She looks in tremendous fettle, and she takes the victory. So that's what happened a short time ago in the heats of the women's 60 metres as we prepare for the hurdles final. <laughs> So Cindy Rolada of Germany, first out of the gate, the 100 metres hurdles, World Championship silver medalist from 2015, European bronze in 2018 outdoors. Karolina Kolasek of Poland will go out of lane two, third in her heat with 8.08. Yvonne Britton Britain was going well. For a long while, Elvira Aaron Herman comes out right next, rather, the European champion from Belarus. We'll be right on the outside in lane eight. Yvonne Britton, there she is, for second in her heat at 8.03, the athlete from the USA, whose best of 7.98 was set this year indoors. Nualota Naziri of Finland, she will be in lane seven. Remember, the athletes being introduced from the outwards towards the centre. Pamela Dukovic, the world leader. That's 7.89. She'll go into lane four. Claudia Sissiers, who ran very impressively in the heat, finished second in 8.04, just outside her personal best for the home nation here, Poland. And Rita Herska, who got under eight seconds for the second time in her life, equaling her personal best of 7.99 with that impressive heat victory. Those are your eight athletes then for the final of the women's 60 metres hurdles. Which is a non-scoring event again. Cindy Rowland, I wouldn't find herself in lane one too often, I wouldn't have thought, Jenny. <laughs> no, I'm sure she would expect it to be in the middle, to be right amongst the action, you know, lanes three, four, five and six are normally the predominant lanes. So Rowland will uh, have to do things the hard way out of lane one, but Herska's performance and also that of the Young Polish athlete, the 20-year-old, Claudia Sisiets, out of lane six, but Pamela Dukovic was a relatively comfortable winner of her heat. And again, Herman, the European champion, Belarus, finds herself right on the outside. She's got two of the three medalists in the European Championships 
in 2018 in lanes one and eight. Oh, just a bit of a stumble from Dukovic. Yeah, I hope that the officials will uh, let her off with that. Um, it's one of those moments where you've, you know, you've got a little bit of anxiety sometimes, and maybe she just uh, was knowing how important that start is. Her hands just almost slipped and fell, and she did raise her hand. So let's hope the officials are going to be kind. Yeah, it did seem to be a slip of the right hand, didn't it? And I think uh, she's just making sure the officials know that as well. So hopefully they will uh, judge favourably on her. Would have been a very close call when we look back at that uh, potential lane infringement earlier on for her to be lining up in this final at all. Yeah, can you see card. the green card. So, yeah, all eight ladies start this final. Goes down as an unsatisfactory start then from our starter. Roller on the inside. Kolacek, Britton, Dukovic, Huska, Sisiets, Naziri and Herman. And we're in 60 hurdles final. Away this time without any problems. A fine start from Herska and Dukovic will have to come through. And Britain also going well. And now Dukovic starts to exert herself. And Dukovic up towards the line, just gets it on the dip. 7.96 for Pamela Dukovic, a sub eight second run. But she really had to put the hammer down in the closing stages there to overhaul Rita Herska. But Dukovic got it on the dip. She did. Herska got out again, like we've seen her get out all four races the last few days. Two in Karlsjur and, um, you know, two races here in Tehran. But you know, you can actually see Dirkovic from about hurdle three. The power just really comes through when she's chasing down an athlete, and her score would have been a whir of that. Absolutely fantastic race the line, and, you know, just a few hundreds of a second between the two of them. Yeah, that's looking like a good European battle. As we again, we see Pamela Dukovic skirting the outside of that lane to the right-hand side again. That's the, the way she runs. But Herska will be uh, catching a few eyes, I think, over the course of the last couple of meetings and has certainly pushed Pamela Dukovic all the way to the line. Yeah, she's definitely put herself in the frame of making that, first and foremost, that European indoor final and maybe pushing all the way to the medals. So we're going to the high jump, men's high jump, and... Ilya Ivanyuk of the authorised neutral athlete, the Russian, of course, 2.25, second attempt, and it's clear. Ivanyuk with 2.25 takes the lead in the high jump. Second time. Very important that for him as well, because five other athletes are failed twice at that, as we see Kendricks in the pole vault. He's gone for 5.92 here, having won the competition. Sam Kendricks has uh, rocketed the bar right up to 5 metres and 92, which would certainly be a new world lead for uh, him. It would also be a meeting record, which is why he's specifically gone for 5.92, and it would rub salt into the wounds of Piotr Lisek, who currently holds that meeting record. Yeah, minute details. One centimetre means all the difference to these athletes. So, yeah, he'll have more attempts at that distance, that height. So, two more to come for Sam Kendricks. Just to update you on the high jump, by the way, four athletes still in at 2.20. Bednarik, Kobielski, Colver and Thomas. We see the confirmed uh, results, and Herska, another Le uh, life best performance for her, 7.98. This is the high jump live. Norbert Kobielski of Poland, third attempt at 2 metres and 25. Waiting his moment. Crowd doing their bit.
Got to be for Norbert Kobielski, who exits the competition with his clearance at 2 metres and 20 centimetres, which uh, equals the performance he turned in in France last week. The national silver medalist here with the same height as well, so he's uh, just got a bit stuck on 220 as Norbert Kobielski, but still young, 22. Those improvements will come. But uh, he thought they might come today, looking by that, uh, that little reaction there. Yeah, he looks disappointed, doesn't he? Donald Thomas will jump next, by the way, in the high jump. Here he is, the Bahamian, 2007 world champion. It's his third attempt at 2 metres 25 as well. And he was closer, but not close enough. Yeah, 2 metres 25 is definitely sorting these athletes out here this evening. We were sport, of course, in Colgio, when we saw the 235 metre clearance yeah. and the 231. Yeah, it was an amazing night in Karlsruhe on the second leg of the tour as Tobey of Japan, who's due to compete in the Czech Republic, by the way, so he's continuing his European tour, so watch out for his performances uh, over the next uh, week or so. But Donald Thomas, the 34-year-old, fourth at the Commonwealth Games, is out of the competition with a 2.20 clearance. Trey Culver will now attempt 2.25 when he's done his laces up. So Resta Ben Narek, in fact, for taking his attempt before Donald Thomas, which is why he was uh, doing his laces up, and Ben Narek bows out of the competition as well at 2.25. So this is proving just a bar too high for everybody so far except Ivaniuk, the authorised neutral athlete. He caught out with his arm on the way up to the... It seemed to be coming off at a pretty early stage, that one from Ben Narek. So at the moment, the Polish field events uh, with Lisak and Wojciechowski in the pole vault, and now the likes of Bednarek not progressing in the high jump. So here's Sam Kendricks, second attempt at 5.92, going for a meeting record. Again, the meeting is won for him. With his clearance earlier on at 5 metres and 78, 5.92 to go into the record books here in Arena Torre. No, he didn't have the height at all, <laughs> did he? It's quite difficult when you're in that situation, you know, you've already got the event won and you're just trying to go for a bar on your own. It's, um, you know, how much do you want it? And, um, you know, he, he, like I say, he just didn't get the height on that one. So this is Trey Culver in the high jump. That uh, bar from Kendrick almost went out the door, it went that far away. As in comes Culver, 225, he was very close, but... The bar comes down. So Trey Colbert's competition is at a close, but he will be pleased to have improved on what he turned it in Karlsruhe. With 2.13 was the only bar he cleared. So 2.20 is a, a significant improvement on that, but capable again of better. Just the glutes, knocking the bar off its uh, standing there. I don't think he's got a sponsor, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> it works, we noticed it. <laughs> Keeps improving up the right direction, adding centimetres, then hopefully he will he will uh, <laughs> find a sponsor very shortly. Men's 60 metre hurdles, the athletes about to come out, clash of the titans. So again, away first time, Eaton going well, and also going well, Constantino on the inside of Rabani, but it's Jarrett Eaton at the moment, comfortably. He clipped a couple of hurdles, I think, but easing down, 7.66 for Jarrett Eaton. <laughs> away they go, Ortega in the centre, also Pereira started well on the outside, but now Ortega starts to exert. We've got a fall there in lane seven, Waters went crashing down, 7.56 for Orlando Ortega, and that is just inside his seasonal best, taking three hundredths of a second off that. So here is the field then for the final of the men's 60 metres hurdles, which is a scoring event. Artur Noga of Poland will go off the inside, the 2012 European bronze medalist outdoors. Gabriel Constantino has lane eight for Brazil, the world indoor finalist over the 60 hurdles in Birmingham last year. Home interest in Damien Chiquier from lane two. Lifetime best of 7.65. World University Games bronze medalist from 2017. Balash Bai, world bronze medalist outdoors over the 110 hurdles in London 2017 for Balash Bai. Lane seven for him.
Another of the world indoor finalists from Birmingham, Roger Irobane of Cuba, plays seventh. Lifetime best of 7.58. Olympic finalist for Rio 2016 from Cyprus, Milan Trikovic, Commonwealth Games fourth placer. Also the Olympic finalist, as we say, from Rio. Lane six, and now we crescendo. First of all to the Rio 2016 silver medalist from the Olympic Games, Spain's Orlando Ortega. Four out of four this year, unbeaten. Either that record will go, or Jarrett Eaton's 100% record in three races this year will go. The world indoor silver medalist, two times US champion, he goes out of lane four. A great, really, Jenny Meadows to have the uh, two of the stars of high hurdling side by side in this meeting today. Yeah, that's what we like to see, isn't it? We love those great head-to-heads, -head, those headliners that you know put the thumbs on seat. So that is the full start list. Polish interest on the inside two lanes, but as you can see there, Ortega in four and Eaton in five, separated on the books by just two one hundredths of a second. Ortega, of course, building up to the European indoors. Jarrett Eaton has the US indoors coming up in Albuquerque in a couple of weeks' time, actually, later this month. Looking to make it a hat trick of US titles. Then 60 meter hurdles final. Noga, Chikia, Irobane, Ortega, Eaton, Trikovic, Bajin, Constantino. Ten points, remember, on the tour for the winner. Ortega got a better start than Eaton, also going well in lane six. Trikovic at this stage, it's just about Ortega. Trikovic coming through, it's Ortega from Trikovic. Five out of five in 2019 for Orlando Ortega, who stops the clock at 7.49 seconds. Yeah, he liked that as well. You just saw him put his hands together, almost praying, and he said, is it me? You know, it was a clear winner. I don't know what he was looking at, but um, yeah, dominant from the start. Just four hundredths of a second outside his uh, lifetime best for Orlando Ortega as well, which is, uh, comes from four years ago, so it shows you how close he is to his shape. But Jarrett Eaton got left in the blocks, really. Yeah, he did. He is better over the longer distance. He does go well over the 110-metre hurdles. Um, you saw that he just got not much projection over that last hurdle anyway. But, um, yeah, compared to Ortega, who's just away from the start, a slimmer, more slight built athlete. Again, you know, he's over to the side of his lane a little bit. But, um, you know, fantastic season's best and not far away from his personal best. Jerry Eaton, as he started to come under pressure in the second half of the race, just clattered the last couple of hurdles as well as he uh, it started to unravel a little bit for him. We say he got left in the blocks. It probably wasn't so much a bad start by him. It was a great start by Ortega. 7.49 in the end. The, uh, the time is rounded to. 7.54 for Trikovic. Jerry Eaton has to settle for third. 7.60. So Sam Kendricks already has two failures on his name. He's already won the competition, don't forget. He's raised the bar to what would be a new meeting record here at the Copernicus Cup meeting, the Orland Copernicus Cup here at Arena Torren. Even though he's beaten off the two Polish competitors who were hoping to challenge him a bit closer than they have, the home crowd are still getting behind Sam Kendricks to potentially set a new meeting record. Has to get this, already the winner. No, just didn't get the height. I think he knew it after the second one that he wasn't getting that close, but it's a winning performance still from Sam, Sam Kendricks, the world champion outdoors, and he takes the title here in Torrey. Yeah, 5 meters 78. Um, got that on his second attempt. He looked supreme though, didn't he, on some of those earlier bars. 
Yeah, and again, it's, I mean, when you're suddenly raising the bar for 14 centimetres, I mean, it's asking a lot, isn't it? It's significant. Yeah. So Kendrick's the winner. Confirmation there, 578 his mark. Lisek 568. Robert Severa of Poland, along with uh, Jersey and Quang, also 528. Wojciechowski, no mark. Unsurprising, uh, surprising performance from him, having passed the early lights. So Ivanjuk in the high jump. So he's had two attempts at 2.27, Ivanjuk already. He has won the competition, by the way. With that lead there, you can see of 2 metres and 25. Nobody else cleared 2.25. Bednarek, Kobielski of Poland in second and third with their appearances at 2.20. But Ivanjuk, 2.27. One more attempt to come for the authorised neutral athlete. European bronze medalist from Berlin last year. National bronze medalist indoors as well. Former European under-23 champion. Has cleared 2.27 this year, so would be relatively confident in being able to achieve this height. Here he comes, final attempt, 2 metres 27. So no, a bit like Kendricks, the winner of the competition, but the final bar proving too much. The Ilya Ivaniuk, neutral athlete, a little bit of a backflip to celebrate his victory with a mark of 2.25. thanking the officials there they work so hard making sure all these bars are set at the right height checking what heights all the different athletes want to come in at so yeah he's had a great evening this evening it certainly has again progress at this stage of the season progress towards the end goal and the uh, likely challenging of the world outdoor championships in doha coming up at the end of the year which of course Hotas Eshabashim will have home advantage for, so will be big expectation on him, I'm sure. The capacity crowd inside the Arena Torrent have enjoyed what they've seen so far on this, the third leg of the IAAF World Indoor Tour. Hope you're enjoying the coverage as well, wherever you're joining us around the world. So our penultimate track event of the evening is the men's 1500 metres. There's page one of the start list. Samuel Tafira, at the bottom of that list, world indoor champion for the 1500 metres. And Marcin Lewandowski, a Polish hero, he's got his eyes on the Polish record this evening. More on that to come in a second. So right on the outside, Adam Szervinski is the uh, pacemaker, Marcin Lewandowski there. The seasonal debut. Let's see what sort of shape he's in. Aman Volta of Ethiopia placed fourth in Karlsruhe the other night in a race won by Vincent Kibet. Samuel Tafira, the world indoor champion from Birmingham last year. All the way from New Zealand, Hamish Carson, the man from Wellington. He was right in the middle of his outdoor season, really, in New Zealand at this time of year, but opting to come indoors. Then we see Teresa Tolosa of Ethiopia, set his personal best here at this meeting last year. Kala Berglund, the European indoor silver medalist. John three, then Emmanuel Rolim, who had a very injury-ravaged year last year from Portugal, he'll go drawn two. And on, on the inside, the European under-23 silver medalist from 2017 for Poland, Mikhail Rosmish. So Adam Czerwinski right off the outside in blue has got a, uh, well, he's got a, a difficult job here in trying to pace Marcin Lewandowski, potentially there's something fast. So away they go. Lewandowski, who uh, is a high mileage trainer, that is for sure. Jen, what have we got on the pace uh, from Szewinski here? Yeah, he's going to take them round in around about 57 seconds for 400 metres. He's trying to go all the way to the 1,000 metres in 2 minutes 23. And uh, they're hoping that will give us a finish time of around about 3 minutes 34, which is very quick indoors. Only a couple of these guys will have ever you know, approached that sort of time. 
Well, the Polish record indoors is held by Marcin Lewandowski at 3.37.37 from four years ago in Birmingham. The meet record here is 3.37.4, held by Tolosa, who's currently running uh, in around about midfield. As they are tracked at the moment by Vorto, who's tracking the pacemaker Chavitsky. Marcin Lewandowski currently in around about sixth position at the moment. Hamish Karshen of New Zealand just off the, the back of the pack at the moment. Yeah, I think Martin Lewandowski is running a really well-judged race, a little bit similar to Laura Muir. It was very quick, actually. Um, still about a second up here now at uh, 400 metres. See the pacemaker just having a quick look over his shoulder. And very reminiscent of a lot of events that we've seen so far. You know, this race is very well strung out, which indicates that, you know, the pace is quick at the front. So it's Water followed by the world indoor champion Samuel Teferi, who actually only placed fifth at the uh, World Juniors outdoors over 1,500 metres. Uh, last year, he's in third position, Roshmish of Poland in fourth, then comes Lewandowski. They move down the back, Tolosa then in sixth position, but it's still the pacemaker Chavinsky taking them on with the two East Africans for company. It was a Kenyan one and two in the 1500 metres in Karlsruhe four days ago. It's an Ethiopian one and two behind the pacemaker at the moment. Yeah, four laps to go now. Seven and a half laps, of course, of this 200 metre indoor circuit. And again, you know, we can see that some of the athletes at the front have got away. There's a big gap now towards this, some of the athletes bringing up the rear of the event. So, the field is in three parts at the moment. The pacemaker followed by Wota and Tafira, then Roshmis and Lewandowski are in the second group of two. And Berglund has made some good progress coming up into fifth position overall. He's followed by Emmanuel Rolin, then Hamish Carson and Tolosa, the meeting record holder, has slipped right to the back of the field at the moment as they start to move up on the inside of the pacemaker Chivinsky, whose job is pretty much done and Water takes over. Yeah, the approach to 1,000 metres about a second down on what they were asking for. But again, if we look at fourth position there, from a Polish perspective, Martin Lewandowski is definitely within his own national record. And the crowd roar as Lewandowski now moves himself up beyond Rosmis and into third position. So it's Ethiopia one and two at the moment. Berglund has also come past a couple of athletes, the Swedish European indoor silver medalist, and he's riding that chasing pack as well at the moment. But it's Walter and Tafira almost side by side, and now it's the teenager Samuel Tafira who hits the front. Yeah, 300 metres to go. This is where the race really kicks in now. Tafira, the world indoor champion, he knows his way round this indoor circuit. And as we come up to the bell lap, he's just pulling away. Lewandowski starts to close then, looking to come across the pace. Arena Torren goes mad as Lewandowski moves into third and now moves into second. The chase is on. Samuel Tafira is ahead of him at the moment. The world indoor champion leads the Polish hero. What can change over the last 100 metres or so? Tafira is moving clear. Still Lewandowski in second, challenged by Berglund. But Tafira moving away up the home straight. He will take the 1500 metres. Lewandowski will hang on for second. 3.35.6, the winning time from Samuel Tafira. Yeah, it's a great time. His personal best is only 3.34. The race was due to go about 3.34. And I'm looking down the field there at Lewandowski, thinking, you know, was it, was it within a couple of seconds of that? His national record is 3.37.37. And, you know, I think he's there or thereabouts. So we'll get confirmation on our computer very shortly indeed as to uh, whether Marcin Lewandowski has uh, achieved that result or not. It is a lifetime best indoors, by the way, for Samuel Tafira, 335-57, Lewandowski 336.5. It is a new Polish indoor record. Yeah, that's what he came for, isn't it? And the Polish crowd are going wild. Lewandowski was really gritting his teeth and he's such a fast finisher, which we really have to obviously pay tribute to Tavera there, being able to hold him off. So not only does he get the Polish record, he gets the meeting record as well, which was held by Tolosa from this meeting last year. A personal best by Kala Berglund, by the way, of Sweden, who I thought ran a great race in third, 3.36.63. Yeah, he was closing, wasn't he, on Lewandowski. Lewandowski was just hanging on for grim death, really, and, you know, just managed to do that with just over a tenth of a second. Keep an eye on the name Berglund, the 22-year-old. New Hunt, European indoor silver medalist from 2017 coming through for third place. So Tafira the winner, he's got rid of his flowers already.
as Marcin Lewandowski is uh, chatting to the crowd here about his experience as we pick up the race with 300 metres to go. And here, well, Lewandowski hadn't quite made his move here. He just got things going in the home straight, coming round with the bell, didn't he? This is where the race really kicked in. To go and hit the front. And uh, Lewandowski, is, you know, he had that record in his mind there at that point. And, you know, it's hard to go from 200 metres out. And you can see what a competitive race he is. He actually had to go quite wide there. I think he came unstuck a little bit in the home straight. And the Swedish athletes chasing him down, you know, the last 100 metres. But Tapera looks superb, you know. He just opens his legs, finds another gear. And I think we can definitely see the battle of the Europeans and what we're going to see in just a few weeks' time in Glasgow there between the pole and the Swedish athletes. Yeah, the crowd would have loved to see Lewandowski come past the line first, but I guess a, a, a much of a consolation in getting the, the Polish record and the meet record. Tafira is an interesting one, isn't he? Because last year in March, he took that world indoor title in, in Birmingham, but only then placed fifth in the world under 20s outdoors. It, it was won by George Manning Goyen. Uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen came second in that race as well. So that was a, a stranger that expected him to take that. Yeah, really strange result, especially when he's world indoor champion at just 18 years of age, and then he can't win his world juniors, but um, can't take tonight's performance away from him. So confirmation of that indoor lifetime best for Tafira, 3.35.57. Polish record and meeting record for Marcin Lewandowski, and a lifetime best too for Kala Berglund of Sweden. Mikhail Rosmus also was up there for a long time as well, just off the, uh, the main pace as well, he posts 3.38. Well, they're certainly enjoying this. Marcin Lewandowski certainly will give himself uh, a big boost going forward now. Trained by his, uh, coached by his brother, isn't he, Jen? Uh, yeah, Thomas uh, is a great character. Um, you know, that's quite a hard dynamic, you know, to listen to your older brother. But um, yeah, he gives some really knowledgeable advice. And you know, we were told that he was going to wear his heart on his sleeve today. He came here for the national record, so I'm sure Thomas and his family are up there celebrating somewhere. I think they will be, that is for sure. The Polish crowd, are, you, you would think from the, uh, <laughs> the, the won the world title, the way the reaction <laughs> is here, but certainly a meeting record and national record. I'm sitting, of course, next to uh, still a national record holder, if you went with this earlier on. Jenny Meadows alongside me, who holds the British indoor 800 metre record. There was some fears in, in Jenny's eyes anyway that Laura Muir might nick it off her, but uh, no. It lives another day, Chris. <laughs> lives another day, absolutely. And in the top ten times in the world, it's not to be scoffed at, absolutely. As Lewandowski unfurls the Polish flag. This is where Marcin Lewandowski realises that he's won, the, uh, he's rather, he's claimed the record. He waited for his time to come up on the computer in front of him. 336.5. And uh, one of the meet director officials as well. Pretty happy as well because they often uh, would love to see just a, a bit of local success. Just makes everyone, the atmosphere is built. People all of a sudden want to come back next year and they are loving it. Look at this. <laughs> Yeah, the great theme. So um, we've got lots of music going on in the background, Polish flags. Um, everyone's just really enjoying this carnival atmosphere. <laughs> Well, he won his first major championship medal at the 2010 European Championships in Barcelona, and here he is, nine years later nearly, still doing it. I thought about you feel old, Jim, but you won a medal at the Barcelona 2010 European Championships. I know, and now I'm sat here talking about people keep doing it, <laughs> but the longevity of himself and Adam Pichot, the 800 metre runner, you know, Martin Lewandowski had the, the dominant amount of his career at the 800 metres, they had a great national rivalry, and he stepped up to the 1500 metres, and yeah, he's still going strong. <laughs> Well, they'll have to clear him off in a bit, because we do have the women's 60-metre hurdles final to come very shortly indeed, but quite rightly, milking it at the moment here in Arena Torren. We come towards the closing stages of this year's Orland Copernicus Cup, the third leg of the IAAF World Indoor Tour, which rolls on, of course, to Madrid on Friday, then Birmingham in the UK, and then Dusseldorf on the 20th of February. So the women's 60 metres final will be our final event on the track very shortly indeed. The athletes standing by. Away in. Svoboda again got a good start. Evans is tracking her. It's still just about Svoboda on the inside. Lansico going very well for Great Britain as well. And Svoboda got it. 7.26. Talu out very well inside, he got away well and also going well, Birchill inside here, it's Talu and Birchill at this stage and Talu takes it 7.16 again. So that's what happened in the heats a little bit earlier on, as we start to meet the athletes first of all, out of lane one, Ayla Del Ponce, the national silver medalist from Switzerland.
fifth in the heat with 7.37. Guy and Evans has lane eight. The Commonwealth bronze medalist and the indoor tour winner from 2017. When this event was last, a scoring event. Lane eight, though, not ideal. Lane two for Clara Seidlova of the Czech Republic. 7.36 in the heat for her. Carol Zahi of France, she has lane seven. 7.11, that personal best set in the heats in Birmingham at the World Indoors last year. Just taking it a bit easy. Here's the hometown hero again, the Polish star, Eva Svoboda. As we said, it's been suffering with a little bit of illness, but 7.08 in Karlsruhe on Saturday. Imani Lansico of Great Britain. Ran well from lane two in the heat earlier on. She'll go to lane six from 7.27 in her heat. Here's the world silver medalist outdoors over 100 and 200 and the world silver medalist over 60 indoors. marie Jose Talu making her seasonal debut at this meeting. A shortened indoor format for her this season, just four meetings, looking to use it as a bit of a training exercise, but she will be gunning for victory here. And finally, we meet Ramona Burchill of Jamaica, second in her heat a little bit earlier on. And she, three times NCAA champion, has lane five. So Swoboda here in lane three has got Talu and Burchill outside her, Tilly Meadows. Yeah, it promises to be a fascinating race, doesn't it? If Savada can recreate the sort of form that we did see um, in Carl Jorah at the weekend, we're in for a great race between himself, Burchell and Talu. So again, we saw Lewandowski not take the win, but take the records. Can Svoboda sign off this meeting here in Poland with the win that these Polish fans have come to see? Final event of the 2019 Copernicus Cup, the IWF World Indoor Tour. It's the women's 60 metres final. Del Pont, Seidlava, Svoboda, Talu, Virtual, Lansico, Zahi and Evans. <laughs> Away first time, Svoboda up on Talu at this stage out of lane three, it's Svoboda, Talu starts to come through now, goodness me, that's tight. 7.15 is the winning time, she's not sure, the crowd aren't quite sure. But Svoboda's been given it, 7.15 ahead of Talu, 7.16. And I think that's more relief than anything there, Chris. You know, a lot of pressure was on her to compete and do well here in front of the home fans. Not feeling great, feeling a little bit under the weather, but hey, okay, she can produce it no matter what. And that's a scout for her as well, Talu. World silver medalist three times in the last couple of years. Yeah, she took the scalp of Daphne Schiffers just at the weekend and now Talu as well. Um, this girl could do no wrong. <laughs> she wants the Glasgow European indoors to be now. She needs it this weekend. Well, Lewandowski, of course, is an experienced hero. He's been on the top stage for nine years or so now and more. But Iva Svoboda, 21 years of age, there's a lot more to come from her. And Polish athletics fans are hopefully going to be hearing a lot more about her in the coming years. I'm sure they will. She looks like she's already a home favourite already. It's really tough, you know, coming to a home venue when the whole crowd are wanting you to perform and to do really well. But, you know, her start was great here. The middle bit, the pickup phase, was so much better than what she actually did in the heat. So I don't know whether she just went through the motions in the heat a little bit more. I was really expecting Tolu to take this, if I'm very honest. Um, Tolu was closing, but, um, yeah, she just executed a really great race there, was the Boda. Well, that is what one hundredth of a second looks like over 60 metres. For Eva Svoboda. And again, there was a bit of uh, umming and ahhing around the arena, and that is the moment when Eva Svoboda realised that she had taken the scalp. As Jenny Meadows says, Daphne Skippers on Saturday and Marie Jose Talu on Wednesday. Not a bad few weeks. And she had a bit of illness in between as well, so probably a lot more to come. And she's thanking this home crowd here at Arena Torren. Again, she will carry her hopes into the European Indoor Championships in 
a few weeks' time in Glasgow, where she took silver last time out in Belgrade. At the moment, you have to say she's uh, right up there with the contenders to go one better than that. Yeah, she is. You know, only 21 years of age. She's already experienced. She's won a whole host of medals, under 20 Europeans, under 23 Europeans. And that silver medal two years ago as a 19-year-old in a senior European final. So can she get on the top of the podium? Um, it looks like she already feels like she has the year this evening. <laughs> So confirmation then of that result, 7-1-5, Tarlu, 7-16. Imani Lantico as well, impressing in third, 7-2-3 for her. That'll be good form to take into the British Championships at the weekend. And Guy and Evans, 7-27 for Jamaica, finishing fourth. So it has been a thrilling night here in Arena Torren, ending with a high of two hometown fine performances, a record from Lewandowski and Svoboda with the win. Shot put women, though, earlier on. So we saw Christina Schwanitz of Germany head out to 18 metres and 97 to see off some stiff competition in the women's shot. The 60 metres hurdles, well, Herska was looking very good in the heats, but Pamela Dutkovic came on late on to take the win. Despite what it says on that caption there, it was Pamela Dukovic who did take the win. Men's long jump, Echeverria, 8 metres 12, which was an improvement by 4 centimetres on what he produced in Karlsruhe a few days ago, the world indoor champion. Men's 800 metres for men, Orlando Ortega was not the winner of that. It went to Eric Sawinski of the USA. Sam Kendricks, his winning mark was 5 metres 78. He failed three times at a meeting record attempt at 5.92 as Lisek and Wojciechowski, the two Polish athletes, didn't enjoy their best day. And the 60 metres women that we've just witnessed, Eva Swoboda holding off the late charge from Mari Jose Talu to win it by one hundredth of a second and send this crowd off into the snowy Wednesday night here in Torren with a smile on their face, that is for sure. The 800 metres women, well, it was billed as a potential British record attempt by Laura Muir, but it went in a lifetime best to Ethiopia's Habitam Alemu with a fine run. There was a fierce pace set by the faith pacemakers, and Alemu judged it to perfection. Ivaniuk, the authorised neutral athlete from Russia, 2 metres 25, was enough to seal victory for him in the men's high jump. Thrilling 400 metres as well, which went to another of the Polish athletes on home soil, Iga baumgart Vita, who set her second consecutive world-leading time. Pafel Maslak is two from two on the IWF World Indoor Tour. He's got 20 points after that victory in the men's 400 metres. The men's 1500 metres on the track, well, all the eyes were on Lewandowski, who set a new meeting record and Polish record as he finished in second place behind the world indoor champion, Samuel Tefera, who a new lifetime best for Ethiopia. So that shows you, I think, how cold it is uh, in Torrent at the moment. The hats and scarves are going back on, but these athletes have given some thrilling performances here this evening, for sure. This crowd, uh, I'm not sure if they realise some of the bits the end, but they will have to go soon. The IWF World Indoor Tour will move on to Madrid in a couple of days' time. You can follow that via all of the IWF channels, of course. Jenny Meadows alongside, thanks ever so much. We've had a couple of great nights in Karlsruhe and, and here in Torrent, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Thanks very much for having me. It's been... Uh, eye-catching stuff for sure. Lots of these athletes building up towards the European Indoor Championships in Glasgow in 2019, of course, as well. Those not heading for the Europeans are continuing to build up towards the World Indoor Championships in uh, Doha, rather the World Outdoor Championships in Doha, of course, at the end of the year. It's been our great delight to have Jenny Meadows, the World and European Indoor silver medalist, alongside us here in the commentary position. Hopefully you've enjoyed our coverage from here at Arena Torrent. For myself, Chris Temple, Jenny Meadows, and the whole team from Arena Torrent, we wish you a very very good night.